This is what a phenomenon is like how to do you to the movie. I hope you guys all enjoy. And it may now begin. Hello guys, Rami X back on another video. In today's video, as the title suggests, is what a phenomenon cause it clean how to doji to the movie. Please like, share the video to a friend who likes with this or stand my content in general. Comment down below your thoughts and feelings about the video. Check out my Discord down below and subscribe. This is a what if that I did years ago now, actually. But I never quite finished it. And so today is the remastered part one of what if naruto or rather what if the namikaze clan had a dojutsu the movie with that being said we can now begin the what if so how i think that this can happen is if the namikaze clan have a dojutsu obviously this dojutsu will be called the kuroi or in full terms the kuroi mei and how you unlock this dojutsu is from constant hardships, like experiencing death, bullying, negative emotions. And although this may seem kind of ironic because all three of these things could happen to a young Naruto, it's genuinely just how you unlock the dojutsu. Another way that you can unlock the dojutsu is when you are in a situation where your back may be against the wall, similar to other dojutsu like the Sharingan that awaken in times of need, this dojutsu can do the same. It can activate when in times of need, in times of extreme desperation, or when you experience something traumatic, like the loss of a loved one. Similar, again, to the Sharingan. For instance, Minato would unlock this dojutsu from the death of Obito, but would later in life realize the drain of chakra from the dojutsu makes it almost pointless in its higher stages, as it has four stages in total. One, two, and three Tomoe. And the last stage is the most draining, the Calamari Kuroi. Although it should be noted that two people in the history of the Namikaze clan have progressed even beyond the four stages into their own unique stages. Stages five and six, wielded by Zenitsu Namikaze, who was alive during the feudal times and actually has a marked grave within Konoha. It also was heavily believed within the Namikaze clan that Zenitsu left a Genjutsu hidden within the eye for the users who progressed past the fourth Tomoe. Many also assumed that he left this dojutsu because he believed that in the future, the line of namikazes with the dojutsu would slowly dilute and become lesser and lesser. And in part, he was correct. It took Minato, a prodigy of the clan who was actually almost full-blooded namikaze, if such a thing even exists, more than 20 years of his whole entire life just to unlock the first stages of the dojutsu because well times became more peaceful and he only unlocked it from seeing the death of his own student the other user of the kuroi mei to go past the fourth stage of the dojutsu was in fact minato namikaze who unlocked what is known as the delta kuroi model one Although the abilities of the eye could not be fully utilized by a young Minato, as he unlocked this after sacrificing his soul to the Reaper of Death, Hail Mary, if you will. So, he was never able to reach the full potential of the Dojutsu. But it should be stated that if Minato were to be reanimated, he would have the Dojutsu as he died unlocking it in its fourth stage delta. With that being said, there are possibly many other wielders of the the fourth stage of the Namikaze clan. Heck, there are even more than that, but those users either died in the feudal times or were killed due to the strain of the dojutsu, and that will be explained way later on. We can now start the story. One day, Naruto is about six years old and is being bullied as he awakens the one Tomoe Kuroi, pushing the bully through dozens of trees, which would evidently knock him out. It would be then that he would pull the other bully and punch him, it had seemed that he had been able to pull and push people and objects at insanely high speeds and do serious damage, similar to an ability found in the Renegon, although Naruto obviously didn't know this. His abilities were much akin to Universal Pull and Almighty Push. It would be then that Naruto immediately ran to the Hokage office. <sighs> Naruto panted as he ran towards the office, eventually barging through the door and looking now at Haruzen. Hello, Naruto. Why the frantic look? 
I, I, I uh, defeated two of the bullies picking on me. Uh, that, that's great, Naruto. Where are they now? Uh, I, I don't know. But, but I did it in a weird way. I pushed one super, super far, and I, I, I pulled another one, and I, and I punched him. W what do you mean? It's like just because I wanted them to be pulled towards me, they came, and, 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 yeah. That's a weird ability indeed, Naruto. I wonder what it can do. Haruzen thought to himself. Well, can you show me it? Y yeah, sure. Naruto went outside, pulling a tree and disrooting it, and pushing it into a bench, which would destroy the bench. Th that's the most I can do. Um, but, yeah. Hmm. That is truly a unique ability. Looking at Naruto's eyes as his jaw dropped. Seeing an Azur glow with a pinwheel shape in the middle, similar to the Sharingan in its Mangekyo state. As he then told Naruto that he possesses what is known as a Dojutsu. Huh? W what's that? Naruto would ask. Have you ever heard of the Sharingan? Uh, of course I have. The great Uchiha clan possesses that dojutsu. The Sharingan. Y yeah, I know the Sharingan. Well, Naruto, your eye is the... The, uh... Uh, yes. Haruzen would quickly disappear and reappear, as he would now have a book in his hand. After getting the book, he spoke to Naruto. This book contains information written by Minato in Zenitsu Namakaze. Realizing that he accidentally could have hinted at Minato being Naruto's father, but Naruto didn't realize this, or at least that Minato was a relative of his. As he then exclaimed that within the book, it talks about the eye, its drawbacks, abilities, etc. Also, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure to do that. Anyhow, Naruto would reply with a quick hmm, as he would then ask Ruzen if he could read it. Haruzen would reply with, of course, that's why he got the book, as he would tell Naruto to make sure to return it afterwards. Naruto would then ask Haruzen if he had read the book before, as Haruzen would tell Naruto that he had not, but that it wasn't his dojutsu, so he had no reason to read it in the first place. Oh, and again, once you're done reading it, can you please give it back to me? Uh, I already said yes, Haruzen. I will return it to you, I promise. Naruto then went home, reading the book, figuring out that the first stage of the Kuroime, its full name, is the ability of pulling and pushing, which I'll refer to as Almighty Push and Almighty Pull, just for simplicity. And the second stage gives its user the ability to rewind his own body by one hour, anywhere in between that, say a few seconds to a whole hour. The third stage allows its user to access all five chakra natures. The fourth stage, increasing perception, reaction time, precognition, enhanced sensory, the ability to create a huge sphere of antiparticles able to implode anything that it touches, or at least damage them, and to see chakra networks, although it should be clear that each user who gets to the fourth stage has their own unique ability. Just like how each user of the Renegon has different abilities from one another, and just like how each manga kill Sharingan has different abilities, varying from member to member. Now, it should be noted that people like Minato would have used the ability to rewind their own body by one hour, for instance, when he called the Reaper to seal Kurama. But the problem with that is, in Minato's case, he had already spent too much chakra in using such a state of the Dojutsu, known as the Kuroime, would, well, dare and kill him anyways, just from the sheer strain, or strain of the dojutsu. With that being said, if I haven't explained this already, the fourth stage increases perception, reaction time, precognition, enhanced sensory, the ability to create a sphere of antiparticles, which I already mentioned, which are able to implode anything that it touches or at least damage them, and the ability to see chakra natures, although it should be clear that again, each user of the fourth stage has their own unique ability, along with the ones mentioned. Naruto would also figure out that there is a secret fifth stage, but you must be a half-breed of the clan, and as such, no one in the Kuroime can access it, besides people like Zenitsu, Minato, and a group of Namakaze who have been listed as the founders, men and women of the Namakaze who were born with the ability to progress beyond the fourth stage, due to their lineage and strong connection to the Namakaze clan. Zenitsu prophesied and theorized in the book 
that later on in times of peace, only half-blooded Namikaze would be able to access up to the fifth stage. He only knew that a time of peace was to come, as Hashirama and Madara had founded a village, for the sole purpose of children not dying on the battlefield. With that being said, many members had gone past the fourth stage, but didn't go beyond that, due to the fact that it would have killed them due to the chakra demand. Now, it's kind of sad that, well, just based off the chakra strain, many of these namakaze could not access their full potential, but that's just the point of the dojutsu. It's kind of overpowered and it needs a weakness. Just like the Sharingan in its deeper stages has the Mangekyo to go blurry, and the Renegon in requires a massive amount of chakra, they Namakaze Dojutsu, the Kuroi, or the Kuroime, has a massive strain of chakra as well. Now, it's not that there hasn't been any half-breeds in the duration of the Namikaze clan, but it's due to the fact that the chakra cost, again, has killed any Namikaze who obtained it. Now, I know that this may seem very redundant that I keep mentioning the strain of chakra that is used to, well, access to dojutsu, but it needs to be mentioned as to why the Namikaze haven't dominated the Leaf Village for, well, all of time, or they would be the most broken clan of Naruto. Now, with that being said, the Namikaze who obtained it as a form, it was too taxing to use, but it's said that with the power, you can exceed time and space and pass through any inanimate object as long as it contains particles within it. It also gives you a chakra armor on the level of a Tensegon. And once you've obtained the eye, the fifth or fourth stage, you can summon a crow or multiple crows, and the one you pick will be your personal summoning. These crows can do a number of things. They also can act as substitutions. It would be then that Naruto would walk outside, finding a training ground, as he would then call upon the legendary crows that were written in the book, doing it, as he knew that he had already awakened the eye. Now, unlike things like the Sharingan, once you awaken the eye, there's no subconsciously awakening it, unless it's a very, very deep form. What I mean by saying this is that just because Naruto unlocked the Dojutsu just hours ago, Naruto can still use the Dojutsu as if he's had it for a year. This is in part due to the fact that the chakra strain would make it so difficult for a Namikaze to actually train with the eye and get better and, well, progress. So, it's kind of like a cheat code, that if you do have enough chakra to possess, say, this first stage, then you get all access to the abilities within the first stage. And that should make sense. If you need context, you can comment down below, and I can explain with greater de detail. With that being said, out of the thousands of crows that Naruto had summoned, one appeared and flew over to Naruto and onto Naruto's shoulder thinking that it was the one that would be his own personal summoning, as it even had the dojutsu, he would de-summon them all, as Naruto, with all of his newly obtained information about his own dojutsu and Keke Genkai, would continue to read through the book, except for one page that Naruto was unable to read. It was almost as if he wasn't far enough. It looked like a ton of gibberish with a few words that were clear. All he saw were Namata Namakaze, Kuroi, Uzumaki, and the words Kenjutsu. With that being said, while reading the book, Naruto had learned more about the Namikaze clan's history, and by extension, his own family's history. For instance, Naruto learned of an incident that occurred over 50 years ago, where the, fan where the founders of the clan excuse me, were attacked by ninja from the Stone Village and the Clown Village, sent to annihilate the clan. Their attempt was almost successful, if it weren't to the sacrifices of every founder, going past the fourth stage and in the process dying due to the chakra drain. The only one who hadn't been killed due to the chakra drain was actually Naruto's own line of the Namikaze clan, the legendary Raizu Namikaze, one of the founders of the clan, who is believed to be Minato's grandfather. Now the reason the stone and cloud attacked the Namikaze clan was because they were growing in number and strength far too quickly, and with Namikaze scattered between the lands of wind, iron, sand, and well everywhere in between, they decided to attack. With that being said, Around the time that they were attacked, they were in the works of joining the Leaf Village, and if they were to do that, the Stone and Cloud believed that they would stand no chance against the newly formed village hidden in the leaves that had not only natural resources, 
strong ninja like the Uchiha and Senju, but they would have another powerhouse clan, which would make them almost unbeatable in this new era of, well, villages. Now then, Naruto would return the book to Haruzen, who would gladly take it, as someone knocked on the door opening it. Haruzen would tell the man who knocked on the door to come in, as it would be a man with short black hair, a cane, bandages around his eye, a seal on his arm, and yellow pigmented eyes. Naruto looked up at the man, as Naruto thought to himself that this guy looks a bit weird, odd, and that Naruto got a little bit of a weird vibe from him, didn't necessarily like the guy. Naruto would then be approached by who would later be revealed to be Donzo by name, as Naruto would back up. Donzo then reached for Naruto's eyes right in front of Haruzen. He knew that Naruto had the legendary Kuroime Dojutsu. He was one of the only people not to be a Namikaze to actually read the book. And, well, he wanted it for himself. As Donzu then got closer and closer and Naruto's body began to be pushed up against the window, Naruto blinked, revealing his one Tomoe Kuroime, pushing Donzu into the wall as Donzu then got up, dusting himself off. Donzo, stop it now! Scowling at Haruzen as he unbandaged his manga cue Koto Natsukami. Haruzen then fell unconscious as Donzo didn't want to kill Haruzen, only injure him. If it came to it, but he was able to just use Koto Natsukami on Haruzen instead, walking towards Naruto, who was now scared and frightened at what had just happened. Also, the fact that Donzo had a variety of Sharingan on his arm. With that being said, Naruto watched as Donzo took off his arm seal. As Donzo then began to mutter words like, It's alright, I won't hurt you, and it won't hurt at all. No. No, Naruto screamed, as Donzo then yanked Naruto's eye out. <laughs> the Kuroime is now mine. And to think that Minato's son possessed such a dojutsu so young. Naruto now, with anger in his eyes. From the intense and immense hate and pain now in his heart, for the person who stripped him of his dojutsu, he would awaken his Tutamoe Kuroime rewinding his body by an hour as his eye then came back to his body due to the fact that he had absolutely no time to practice the technique as well it would be even more broken if any namikaze could just use a technique to its full ability just by having the chakra to do so naruto accidentally reset his body by an hour instead of say something like five minutes or three minutes or just to write before his well i went out with that being said, Naruto's eye then came back to his body, fading from Donzo's ha hands. What the heck? Do you have some sort of Izanagi ability? I'm not sure what that is. Donzo. Naruto said under his breath, extending his hand towards Donzo, as the QB's chakra began to leak from Naruto's body. Naruto had expended so much chakra by rewinding his body by a whole hour that the QB actually had to step in and let parts of his chakra leak through the seal, as tight as it already was. The seal, that is. With that being said, Naruto slowly but surely began to gain more and more chakra once more, as he had to slowly release Kurama's chakra in a quick burst. It would be then that he yelled to Donzo, Almighty Pull. Pulling Shisui's Mangekyo Sharingan out of Donzo's eye socket, and with nowhere to put it, he put it in his crow, as he then extended his eye out again. What I mean by that is that Naruto now opened his eye once more as his eyes were closed while using Almighty Pull and planting the eye in his crow. He had a sort of connection to the crow. It would be then that he would now extend his hand, yelling Almighty Push. With the vermilion of the chakra still present, the nine tails added even more strength to Naruto's dojutsu and power, sending Donzo through thousands of bil buildings through the leaf village, which evidently left a lot of damage, but also happened to kill him over and over again. With the unrelenting push, which would leave Donzo with one more Sharingan on his arm. Donzo realizing that he, well, technically speaking, only had one more life left, 
with only one Sharingan left to revive himself with, he would flee to become a mercenary. As before he left, he took his personal route and a few Sharingan with him, filling his Sharingan arm back up and leaving the village. Sharingan that he did not have massive amounts in this timeline of due to the fact that the Uchiha massacre has yet to happen. And so most of these Sharingan are from ninja of the Uchiha clan dying on battles and root Ambu collecting the bodies and their dojutsu. With that, Donzo would become a mercenary, as he knew he could not return to Haruzen, as Naruto would either explain to Haruzen what had happened, or Haruzen would easily remember the events that took place in his office. Naruto would then wake Haruzen up and tell him what had happened. Surprised that Naruto could control a fragment of the Kyuubi's chakra, or that the Kyuubi had decided to work with Naruto, he wouldn't ask Naruto any questions. He didn't want Naruto to become, well, scared anxious or anything in between of Haruzen. Due to the fact that Naruto seeing someone who was trusted within the village betray him, he didn't want Naruto to think of him as untrustworthy. So Haruzen asking more and more about Naruto's powers would probably only make the young boy concerned. Naruto would then be excused by Haruzen to go home as he did so, falling asleep and meeting the nine tails within his own subconscious. Now with that being said, this is the end to what if the Namikaze clan had a dojutsu part 1 remastered. I hope you guys all enjoyed. Um, this video was scripted, so it had a very different vibe from some of my other content. I love making scripted videos because it's so much easier. Um, but it's also so much harder, it's a lot more work, so much more time spent scripting. Um, and overall, it drains me a lot more than just going and speaking on a what if. If you do enjoy this style of content much more, let me know and I can make an effort to make more scripted content. But with that being said, this is about as far as we'll go today. Although there may be a part two released that all depends on if I'm feeling like a double upload or not. I hope you guys all enjoyed today's video. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Share your thoughts and feelings about the video down below. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Comment down below what if suggestions if you'd like. Check out the description. My Discord is also in the description, and if you can support the channel with a super thanks or really anything, then that would be appreciated. To be clear though, if you're not comfortable doing that at the moment, any support in any way would be appreciated. And with that being said, Rami X, out. Rami X back in another video. Hope you guys all enjoyed today's video. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Share the video to a friend who likes to do this or just anime content in general. Comment down below your thoughts and feelings about the what if, as well as what are suggestions that you'd like me to do in the future. You can support the channel with a super thanks, but if you're not comfortable doing that at this time, then that's okay, and all forms of support are appreciated. This is what if the Namikaze clan had a dojutsu part two, or if you're watching this as a movie, it is the second part of the movie. With that being said, we can now begin. We left off with Naruto falling asleep and meeting the Ninetales within his own subconscious. It would be here that the Ninetales and Naruto would have an extensive conversation, as the QB would end his, well, conversation with Naruto growling at Naruto. But before doing so, he told Naruto that, well, based off what he can see, they are closer to one and the same than, well, than what meets the surface. Naruto has now met with the Kyuubi, and in a way, they have kind of become somewhat friends, as Naruto would wake up. Also, side note, Sasuke in this timeline is just going to know a bit more about his heritage, more specifically, the Sharingan and Uchiha tablet. How he knows this? Well, he was actually told by Zetsu, who was trying to manipulate a young Sasuke. Although, after being found by Itachi Uchiha, he has said, well, nothing to Sasuke, because he has not tried to reach out to Sasuke Uchiha in the first place. They're on. With that being said, Naruto would wake up walking outside of his apartment. He would then see Sasuke running. Curiously, Naruto would follow him, running after Sasuke. He would watch Sasuke go underground into this weird temple thing, as he would follow Sasuke to see what he was up to. As he then said to himself, what the hell is that thing? as he saw Sasuke awaken his two Tomoe Sharingan and begin to read the stone tablet inside of the stone temple. But it was almost as if he wasn't able to read at all or that he was having difficulties as Naruto kept seeing Sasuke squint his eyes and murmur the words to himself. 
Sasuke then yelled, Damn it. I can't read it all yet. Well, well, I'll, I'll pave my own destiny. One where I'm the strongest Uchiha and even better than Big Brother Itachi. With that being said, Sasuke walked out of the temple-like shrine as Naruto hid behind a wall. Naruto waited for Sasuke to exit as he then jumped in, looking at the tablet. He decided that he would try to read said tablet as he would activate the Kuroime in its second stage. He then tried to read it as all he saw were blurred words, but behind them were different words, clear as can be. I see no reason why a certain founder of the Namikaze clan wouldn't be able to put a jutsu on the tablet and inscript it just like Zetsu had changed the words on the tablet. So in this timeline, this tablet would actually not originally be an Uchiha tablet, but instead it would be a Namikaze tablet that was created thousands of years ago by the first Namikazes to walk the earth. Men and women who were alive during the time of even Asura and Indra. Indra would later repurpose this very tablet as, well, it would become that of an Uchiha tablet, as Zetsu would obviously later even change that very tablet to then manipulate future Uchiha. With that being said, Naruto would then read it, as it was about his dojutsu. It read that if you are reading this, you possess the Kuroime, and you should know the basic stages of the dojutsu at this point. But what you don't know is that there's actually another way to awaken the other stages of the Kuroime. Naruto's jaw would almost drop. Also, if you haven't already subscribed and liked the video, make sure to do that. Naruto then thought to himself, there's more stages? He continued reading. The first way is your darkness, your evil and negative emotions. The second, when you need and desire nothing but power. These two ways almost go hand in hand. They give a namakaze like yourself, I'm assuming, different powers based on your own personality and abilities that are even sometimes catered to you. Now, that is probably the way that you are familiar with. The third way is actually with positivity, happiness, and positive emotions. When you awaken the other four stages of the Kuroime, then and only then will you be complete as a namakaze. The abilities of the four stages that I speak of are first, being adept at lightning and water style. Second, a Susanoo-like armor. Of course, in the tablet, it did not say this. It would just say an armor that is almost impenetrable. Third, the ability to stop time. Fourth, the ability to predict the movements of others. It would also state that the overuse of the negative emotions, if not balanced with the positive, would cause you to lose your sanity. Naruto would then bow to the tablet and leave Sasuke, as, well, like I just said, Sasuke was quietly watching Naruto. He had realized that Naruto was following him, but didn't have the time to stop and tell him to go away. But now seeing Naruto exit the same, well, temple and, well, trying to read the same tablet that he tried to read, this would infuriate Sasuke as he would rush at Naruto, who would block Sasuke's attack, using Almighty Push to push Sasuke into a building. Luckily for Naruto, Sasuke would land his head on the cement, which meant that no high-ranking Uchiha would be alerted as no more conflict would arise. As, well, Sasuke now lied unconscious on the ground. Naruto then walked away as he would go about his day normally, falling asleep in his own apartment later that night. The next day, Naruto realized that he made a grave mistake in harming the Uchiha. Three Uchiha now knocked on his door, abruptly opening it after the third knock. Are you Naruto Uzumaki? One of the Uchiha asked. I yeah, why? What are you doing in my apartment? It would be then that one of the Uchiha would grab Naruto, pushing him up against the wall and choking him. Naruto, with nothing to do, struggled to breathe, kicking his feet at the Uchiha, who laughed. You think you can just get away with hurting one of our own? <sighs> the Ninetales brat thinks he can do anything. Hear that, brother? Yeah, I hear that. Naruto then activated his Kuroime, using one of the famed abilities of the Dojutsu. As he would rewind his body to a point when it wasn't being pushed against the building, as Naruto then shifted reality, he appeared out of the grass with the Uchiha and then grabbed all of them, calling his crow, who used Genjutsu on them, knocking them out. He then ran as fast as he could, getting to the Uchiha compound. 
looked and realizing that it was oddly quiet. Naruto's plan was that he would explain exactly what had happened to Sasuke's mom and dad. And, well, try to gain their forgiveness, and therefore the rest of the clan, as he knew that Fugaku was the, well, clan's head. He then realized that no one was around. Even the men and women who set up fruit stands weren't there. His walking quickly turned to running as he then began to pick up his pace. Maybe there was some secret meeting or party being thrown deeper in the Uchiha compound. On his way, he would see bodies upon bodies upon bodies of Uchiha laying dead on the ground. He then frantically knocked on Sasuke's door, but with no answer, he slowly turned the knob, opening the door as he was scared at what he may see. He saw blood and he, Fugaku and Mikoto Uchiha on the floor. It appeared as if they were dead. But he also saw Sasuke and Itachi over Sasuke. Naruto then spoke. Uh, excuse me. Hello, Naruto. Why are you here, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, I, I uh, wanted to apologize to Sasuke for hurting him. Huh. So he's the one who knocked out Sasuke. Surprising indeed. Well, no one's going to stop you, Naruto. Say what you wish to. Thank you, Itachi. I'm sorry, Sasuke. I really didn't mean to hurt you earlier. Uh, yesterday, sorry. Uh, the, not that badly, at least. It's, it's just that you came rushing at me, okay? So, so, uh, uh, yeah. Naruto then activated his one Tomoe Kuroime, as everything became clearer to Naruto. With his advanced perception, he began to realize things that were off. It appeared as if Itachi had killed them. Itachi had killed Sasuke's parents. And the tears on Sasuke's face were now more evident. Although they began to dry, he could still see them. Sasuke was in danger. Naruto could now hear his own heart beating louder and louder as he would rush at Itachi, who turned around, blocking all of Naruto's blows and judo slamming him into the ground. Almost immediately after the counter, Naruto jumped up, windmill kicking Itachi. Huh, he slipped past my defenses. This is no normal seven or eight year old. It would be then that he would grab his sword, as Naruto then called forth his crow, who appeared on his shoulder, nodding at it as it then opened its mouth to reveal another crow. Naruto then grabbed this crow by its leg, throwing it at Itachi, who wasn't foolish enough to dodge, but rather would try to use a genjutsu on the crow. It was to no avail, as before it could even touch Itachi, the crow exploded. Smoke then began to fill the room, and slowly but surely this smoke began to condense around Itachi. Itachi thought about ambushing Naruto as, well, quickly as he could while the smoke was still covering the room, but instead he didn't want to risk whatever the smoke was actually being able to surprise him and, well, harm him. With that being said, the crow then had disappeared and was gone, and as the smoke condensed around Itachi's body, it began to kind of form an aura of smoke around him, becoming smaller and smaller. As it well, surrounded Itachi. An explosion would then be created as the smoke that had actually surrounded Itachi meant that the blast radius was not able to harm Sasuke or Naruto, but it did allow Naruto to damage Itachi. When the smoke cleared, 30 crows were left of Itachi's body, and although Naruto believed this to be the end of Itachi and that they were his own crows, it was actually Itachi just using a substitution jutsu, as they slowly formed together to create Itachi's whole body. Itachi now stared at Naruto as he gathered up air in his lungs. Itachi would then yell out to Naruto, Fire Style! Phoenix Sage Fire Technique! This attack would send Naruto and Sasuke flying out of the house. Naruto's arms were now burnt, but he stood up. Itachi smiled as he now stood atop a wooden pole that allowed electricity to flow through the Uchiha compound. Itachi identifying and knowing this would blow fire on the wooden pole. Also, side note, if you heard some talking in the background, that was a family member of mine, and I apologize. It would be then that Itachi would jump onto a nearby building, as the wooden pole was now lit ablaze. Itachi's theory was that through letting the wood catch on fire with his Phoenix Sage fire technique, 
it would cause the metal connected to all of the Uchiha compound homes to spark, which would cause, well, fire to the entire compound and would probably blaze it with fire. Naruto saw this as he would jump towards Itachi, kicking him down into the ground, but it was too late. All around Naruto were many fires that turned into bigger and bigger fires with time. Naruto watched as this happened, and he realized there was just about nothing that he could do to stop it. Naruto grit his teeth. What kind of big brother are you? All I've seen you do is destroy everything that Sasuke held dear to him. And that, that is unforgivable. You're Itachi Uchiha, the prodigy, the famed ninja. How could you treat your little brother like trash? How could you kill your own family members? Your, 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 your own clansmen. Naruto was so infuriated by what Itachi had done that his Kuroime entered a hybrid form. With that, he punched Itachi in the gut. Itachi fell to one knee, coughing up blood. He was beginning to slow down. Although he believed himself to be someone with an incredibly high amount of chakra, and that is quite true, killing the entire clan put a lot of strain on his body, and obviously fighting people stronger than average Uchiha members within the clan was also a lot to deal with as well. On top of that, now having to tangle with a Jinjuriki, you wouldn't be able to blame Itachi for at least faltering a little bit. Naruto would then go on to release a barrage of punches towards Itachi, who would effortlessly dodge them, even in his now weakened state, if you want to call it that. Too tired to use jutsu, as Itachi feared that doing so would possibly cause him to pass out and be captured by Leaf Anbu. It would be then that he fought with Naruto, with only Taijutsu and Taijutsu alone. It would be here that he would best Naruto in nearly every aspect. Sasuke could do nothing but watch, as Sasuke watched Naruto keep up with Itachi, who seemed to be moving at near lightning fast speeds. Naruto continued to do battle with the Uchiha, as eventually Anbu appeared on the scene. The massive fire led them there. Now, it wasn't just Naruto versus Itachi, it was Naruto and seven skilled Anbu, which seemed to only be the first of many. An exhausted Naruto fell to his knees after a gut punch from Itachi, which knocked the wind out of him as, well, Naruto had let his guard down only for a minute, and Itachi was able to exploit that. He had let his guard down because he had seen the Anbu come. It would be then that the Anbu took charge, attacking Itachi with all their might, but it was made clear to them that a 13-year-old Itachi Anbu squad captain was way out of their league, as he brought them all to their knees, disabling their movement by attacking certain pressure points in their bodies. Naruto watched this happen as sweat trickled down his forehead, Looking up, he saw Sasuke being held up against a wall by Itachi, who was visibly placing him under a genjutsu with the Sharingan. Naruto could do nothing but watched until, through sheer willpower, he forced his body to stand, hurling himself towards Itachi, who unsheathed his blade, plunging it right through Naruto. Naruto let off a quiet scream. <laughs> as he felt the blade pierce through him, now watching his blood pour down the blade. He began to grow queasy. He determined Naruto would reverse his body to when it wasn't stabbed by Itachi, as he would then rush after Itachi, who was now fleeing the scene. A tired Naruto yet determined Naruto followed Itachi. Realizing this, Itachi would begin to speed up. His advanced stamina allowed him to sustain high speeds, but little did Itachi know, Naruto Uzumaki had the stamina of a god, and that was putting it lightly, hailing from the Namakaze clan and the Uzumaki clan, and, well, obviously having the QB, which meant that Naruto was able to keep up with Itachi, who was surprised. Itachi would do many things to shake Naruto off his tail, from him throwing Naruto off with changes in direction, speed, and distance and strides, but it was to no avail, and it did nothing to halt Naruto. Nothing but make Naruto more determined to catch up to him. Itachi then created a shadow clone, as Naruto believed that he was seeing double. But the clone, well, the clone quickly stopped moving, 
causing Naruto to think that he was just hallucinating the clone. As the clone then ended up behind Naruto, throwing dozens of kunai towards Naruto who didn't realize. Before it was too late, he began to turn his head. As all 12 kunai hit him, five in his back, four in his left leg, and three in his left arm. Itachi's clone was precise, and every single kunai had a purpose. Itachi's clone then exploded on Naruto's body, as Naruto then began to hobble. The clone's explosion doubled the damage on his body, as he fell out of the air, bumping into and through a few trees on the way down. Itachi's main body then stopped, as he felt the clone explode, and he knew that it had injured Naruto, since it was only meant to explode if it had made contact with Naruto. It would be then that Naruto watched as Itachi walked closer and closer to him. Naruto now looked up at Itachi with a red eye, with Tomoe and a slit in the middle. Itachi was surprised, but said nothing, as he knew that Naruto was on the brink of passing out, and so before he could, he would ask Naruto what his relation to his younger brother was. And Naruto couldn't help but tell the truth and tell Itachi that, well, he wants to be Sasuke's friend. And after hearing this, Itachi would summon a crow that would then fly into Naruto's mouth. Naruto could do nothing but swallow it as Naruto tried to ask Itachi what he did, but by the time he did, Itachi was gone and Naruto's eyes were slowly closing. It seemed that he had entered one of Itachi's genjutsu. The Jinjuriki could be placed into Genjutsu by an Uchiha. The Kyuubi was baffled and did nothing. He knew that Naruto's body wasn't in danger, as, well, he could see that Itachi clearly left and there was no harm to, well, Naruto. He also believed that if Naruto was in a weakened state, then more of his Kyuubi chakra could get through the seal, which would make breaking out of Naruto's body much easier long term. It would be then that Naruto spoke with Itachi, Side note, I did say, that was loud, very loud. Side note, I did say that, well, the QB is now kind of Naruto's friend, and I'm well aware of that, but it doesn't mean that Kurama's going to ever look past his true goal, which is, well, having freedom. It would be then that the Genjutsu had fully activated, as he saw Itachi. It would be here that Itachi would actually speak to Naruto, as he would go on to explain the corrupt nature of the government of the Leaf Village. He would explain why he did what he did and what caused him to do so. He would explain the elders and even the root Anbu led by Donzo. It would be here that he disappeared and Naruto woke from the Genjutsu. The night sky was now a clear day sky and Naruto had felt like a week had passed, although it was a much shorter amount of time than it passed in reality. He slowly but surely pulled the kunai out from his back and leg and arm as he stood up. Now with one good arm and one good leg, since the other leg and arm were previously riddled with kunai just minutes ago. Naruto would use his right leg and right arm to propel, well, to propel himself forward, excuse me, as he ran back to the leaf village. So after getting back to the leaf village, Naruto would pass out, waking up in a hospital bed beside Naruto with Sasuke as Naruto would stand up putting on his clothes and looking down at Sasuke who looked like he was having a nightmare, eyes opened and drowsy and his head looking downwards. Naruto would activate his Kuroime, breaking the Genjutsu as Sasuke's heart rate and facial expression became normal. Little did Naruto know, by identifying that he had been placed under a Genjutsu by Itachi and breaking it, he had saved Sasuke from thousands of sleepless nights. Leaving the room and going to the training grounds of the hidden leaf village, as Sasuke would wake up, going home, as he now saw Naruto training. He would admire Naruto, but he also envied him, and a piece of Sasuke hated Naruto. He would then decide that he wouldn't let Naruto leave him in the dust, and that he would train even harder than Naruto to catch up, and to actually be able to fight Itachi and kill him. As well, he did train, and we will now have a time skip of 5 years, officially making Naruto 12 and Sasuke also 12 years old. Naruto during this time skip has been training, 
very hard and has managed to awaken the third stage of the Kuroime in its negative and happy form, a feat in its own right. For any Namakaze, let alone the Jinjuriki of the Nine Tails, Naruto, Uzumaki. Nevertheless, Sasuke will also be getting a massive amp that his canon counterpart did not receive, gaining the three Tomoe Sharingan at just the age of 12, a blade, and a tanto, which is just a short sword. Sasuke also now has lightning style almost mastered. Now, you may say that this is a stretch, but I believe five years of Sasuke consistently training is, well, enough for Sasuke to have the three Tomoe and, well, mastery over lightning style. Naruto and Sasuke would pass the academy with flying colors, as this Naruto is much smarter than his canon counterpart at this point, and we are now waiting for Kakashi so that they can have the bell test. Also, quick, 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 quick change in the timeline. Hinata will be on Team 7 instead of Sakura. Kakashi would then explain the rules of the bell test, and Naruto would ask Sasuke if he was willing to work with him. Sasuke would then say that he was willing to work with Naruto as long as they each got one bell. Naruto knew that he was going to go after the bell, but he also knew that he was just going to end up giving it to Hinata anyway. Sasuke, join in about a minute after me. I'll weaken him enough so that you can at least touch him. Okay, got it. So I'm going to be the number two here? Yeah. Think of me as a doikoi. A doikoi? Yeah, you know, the thingy that... Uh, I think you mean a decoy, Naruto. Yeah, a decoy, whatever. Just think of me as a decoy. Naruto then ran at Kakashi. A frontal assault? Hmm. You're pretty brave. It would be here that Naruto would face off against the copy ninja, as Naruto would then say frontal attacks are the best to catch your opponent off guard and to lower their defenses. Universal pulling Kakashi, as he would then punch Kakashi as he came towards him, and Almighty pushing him afterwards. This kid is really something. I don't think my body's ever been manipulated like that. I wonder what the weakness to a jutsu like that is. Maybe it has an... Maybe it has an immense chakra strain. But before Kakashi could think any further, Naruto attacked him once more. Lightning style. Lightning ball encasement. Multiple bolts of lightning then flew at Kakashi. Sink with me, Sasuke. It's time. Let's form a combination jutsu. Sure thing. Uchiha style, great fireball jutsu. Kakashi, just fast enough to perceive this jutsu and their movements, activated his Sharingan, breaking it down and slowing his perception, holding out both of his hands and activating the Chidori in one and nothing in the other. Catching the fireball, which would char his hand, burning through his gloves due to the increased heat because of the lightning style in the fireball. With that, the Chidori was able to absorb most of the lightning in the Jutsu as he came running towards Naruto with the Chidori still active, hypothesizing that even if he got too close, Naruto could just blast him away like he did before with that Jutsu that seemed to barely drain Naruto's chakra. As Naruto then prepared hand seals for the water style water vortex Jutsu, but Kakashi was too fast, interrupting the Jutsu. Kakashi was no slouch as he then hit Naruto, pulling back immediately, but it was too late. A huge cloud of dust appeared around Naruto's body, as a thick and tight aura then surrounded him, latching onto his legs, feet, face, arm, and body, similar to that of a Susano armor, or even aura. It would be here that Naruto would now run at Kakashi, who had taken a moment to gauge how much damage had been done to Naruto. Although, this may seem stupid, but, well, Itachi had quite literally just hit Naruto on accident with a Chidori, although he pulled away to minimize the amount of damage done. It would be here that Kakashi would snap out of it, running at Naruto with his Chidori and stabbing it through the chakra armor that Naruto had created and plunging it into his spleen. He now realized that he had harmed Naruto truly, but this could all be learned as a learning lesson. It was clear to Kakashi that Naruto was far above the level of the average Genin, and so Knowing that you can be hurt like this in combat by merely just your own sensei, let alone ninja on the battlefield, would be a great lesson. And heck, Naruto hadn't even truly, truly displayed teamwork yet. The lightning around his hand then dissipated. It had seemed that in the brief moment of Kakashi hitting Naruto, Hinata had stepped in, hitting Kakashi's chakra points. Kakashi then used the first gate of opening, which, if you don't know, is an ability that he does have. 
gaining an amp and jumping into the air. It had seemed that while Kakashi and Naruto were fighting, Naruto had a shadow clone briefing Sasuke and Hinata on the perfect moments to step in and help. It would be here that Sa Kakashi would land, exclaiming that they all passed the test and would be promoted to the getting rank. Naruto and Sasuke then smirked and Hinata smiled. They both quickly turned their attention to Naruto, who fell down to his knees, grabbing his injured spleen and passing out. Kakashi stood in front of them, reading a volume of his Makeout Paradise volume. Or rather, novel. Excuse me. Kakashi would sigh, speaking to Hinata and Sasuke. Would you two quit worrying about Naruto? He'll be fine. Hinata and Sasuke looked at each other and then back at Kakashi as they grit their teeth, attacking Kakashi who held his composure while still reading the Makeout volume. As he quickly rested the book on the ground, kicking Hinata and Sasuke, creating distance between him and them. He then created an earth wall which allowed him to carry on reading, but it was then that the earth wall broke, causing Kakashi to stand up and grab Naruto. It would be here that he would run away so that he could take Naruto to the hospital quickly and keep reading his novel. A few days would pass with Naruto, Sasuke, and Hinata beginning their ninja life. As Naruto quickly healed from this injury due to his obvious Uzumaki healing factor and the fact that he is a Jinjuriki. Kakashi took them on some D rank missions, where on, well, the first day of taking them, they were clearly all above the level of taking random D rank missions like saving cats and helping random old ladies. It would be here that Kakashi would explain the reasoning for not worrying about Naruto, as he could tell that. Sasuke and Hinata were still kind of upset about it and looked at him differently than they would if, well, he explained. He would and they eventually understood. It would be here that they got bored of all the D-rank missions. Even Hinata, a timid girl and even an understanding one, was bored and knew that she was far above the level of catching cats and cutting wood and things of the sort. Eventually, it prompted Kakashi to ask for a C-rank mission as Haruzen gladly agreed seeing Team 7 worthy of one due to their insane talent and strength, proving that in just a few days that they had done D-rank missions and, well, even through the bell test. Kakashi had even stated that this was the strongest group of Genin that he had ever put through the bell test, and it was fitting that they were the only group to pass it. With that being said, they then started their steering mission to the Land of Waves. The next week, and on their way out of the village, they would encounter Shino, who was following Naruto. Naruto then turned around asking what Shido wanted, and Chino exclaimed that his bugs really liked his chakra. Though you're no Abarame, this is quite strange. My bugs really like you. That's weird. Naruto didn't say this, but he did think it. It would be here that he decided to ask why, why his bugs liked him, as Shino told him that he had no real clue. Why? as he would go on to tell Naruto that they, as in his bugs, wanted him to give Naruto a gift of sorts. Here, this box contains bugs that fight any poison and can even heal you of your injuries. It is to my understanding that you and Hinata and Sasuke are going on a mission. If you or one of them gets poisoned, heck, even if Kakashi Sensei gets poisoned, then these bugs can help you. Naruto would gladly accept the gift, thanking Shino, although he still thought it was quite weird that his bugs liked his, well, presence. We will now skip to when they see the puddle. Hinata seeing this would activate her Byakugan and tell the team that there are two ninja within the puddle, probably for a surprise attack, and Tazuna is most likely their target. It would be here that Naruto pulled out his short sword, and Sasuke did as well, striking lightning style through it. Naruto then clashed blades with Sasuke's sword as they were able to conduct both of their blades. This was due to the fact that Sasuke had not fully mastered lightning style yet, at least not on objects like his sword. This meant that Sasuke's sword now also had lightning style on it as well as Naruto's as they both slammed their blades into the ground, electrocuting the demon brothers as water and lightning are great as combination techniques and even deadlier as, well, a means of hurting someone. Naruto would then pull the Demon Brothers out with the assistance of Sasuke, as Kakashi then interrogated them and figured out that they were after Tazuna. 
Naruto himself seeing it as a duty that he must complete the mission would convince Kakashi to keep going and they would continue on their way. Little did Naruto know, Kakashi already planned on while well, continuing to go. He saw that this could also be a learning experience and that they shouldn't trust anyone just because they're in need. It would be on their way to their first encounter with Zabuza and Haku that they would notice that something was wrong. Something seemed off and they could feel strong chakras. It would be here that they entered the scene as the battle between Zabuza and Haku would begin. Also, this Haku is much, much, much more ruthless and willing to kill and beat people in this timeline. But that's besides the point. Their first encounter does go the same, prompting them to retreat as Zabuza had called in a reinforcement, Donzo Shamura, and his Ombu squadron, who are now working as mercenaries alongside him. As I explained in the last part, basically, Donzo's goal is to take out Naruto, Sasuke, Hinata, and Kakashi, and obtain their dojutsu. Within the week time period before their next encounter with Sabaza, Naruto, Sasuke, and Hinata would train on tree climbing, and they would all complete it in one day. Due to Sasuke's Sharingan being in the Three Tomoe state, he has better analytical skills. Hinata is naturally gifted, and her Byakugan allows her to see far into the future, but at this point, she can predict similar to the Sharingan. As shown with Momoshiki and Boruto, the Byakugan is very much so capable of doing this. As Momoshiki, with his advanced Byakugan, was able to even know Nar Naruto and Boruto's fate in the future. Specifically, Boruto, though. As well as Naruto's own dojutsu, the Kuroime, allowing him to fluctuate his chakra. And so the rest of the time, Kakashi starts training Sasuke on the basics of the Chidori and Naruto on the basics of the Rasengan. Yeah, Naruto and Sasuke are learning the Chidori much quicker slash earlier in this timeline. By the end of this training, they would manage to gain imperfect versions of their signature jutsu. An imperfect version of the Rasengan for Naruto and an imperfect version of the Chidori for Sasuke. Kakashi would tell Naruto that he hypothesizes that Naruto has much more chakra than even at first glance, but that his true reserves only come forth when he has to protect his comrades or friends, or must do something. Nevertheless, Hinata would work on her chakra nature, and I'm adding water to her chakra natures, as I think it fits Hinata. And she learns the water needle jutsu, which she's been shown to use in the anime, and here's a quick summary of the jutsu. Using chakra control granted by the gentle fist, Hinata can concentrate her chakra now, until water vortexes are created around her. Those vortexes shoot water blasts, which turn into needle-like water. By using the Byakugan, this technique can be used with great precision to hit very small targets or people in precise areas, as we now skip to their second encounter in the Inari scene, which goes the same as they arrive on the bridge. Seeing eight figures, five Ombu, two of which were Yamato, otherwise known as Tenzo, and Sai, and another two of them, Fu Yamanaka and Torne Abarame, as well as the last being Yugao Yuzuki. The three other figures, slash the two other figures, were Donzo Shimura, Zabuza Momochi, and Haku Yuki. Kakashi would then retreat, calling in for reinforcements, as the Ambu looked for them. It would appear that Team 7 was hiding behind some foliage as reinforcements began to make their way to the Land of Waves. Kakashi then said that these are all very powerful ninja, and that this mission has now gone from what Kakashi believed to be a small B, possibly A rank mission, to easily an S rank mission. So, be extremely careful. Naruto responded with got it, and Sasuke would do the same. Hinata said nothing, but her facial expression clearly showed that she was determined and that she understand the grand scale of the situation. It would be here that Naruto would ask Sasuke to back him up, as Sasuke would nod. Also, Hinata, you should back me and Naruto up from afar, Sasuke would say. The technique that you just learned, the vortex thingy? It can be very valuable even in this situation. Hinata would nod, as she would tell Sasuke that she could only do it ten times before not having enough chakra, and then she'd have to use things like the Gale Palm or Jutsus that really are more so close range. And that's not really what you guys need in battle. So, she'll use her vortex jutsu until she can't anymore. Naruto smiled, thanking Hinata, as Hinata nodded, blushing. Naruto then ran into battle with Sasuke and Kakashi at his side. It would be here that before engaging in combat, he would yell almighty push, pushing all of them away. Surprised by the attack, most of the ninjas 
completely lost their footing and, well, flew. Except for Donzo, who hadn't been pushed back, knowing of the technique and using ninja wire with weights on the end of them as to not move and to be affected by the attack. It would be here that Sasuke then fired off a fire-style fireball jutsu at Donzo, as Yugao Yuzuki jumped in the way, opening a scroll and using the enclosing technique to decimate the fireball, and then fire it at Sasuke, who then used a move similar to Shisui's Uchiha-style halo da dance, slicing through the fireball in a linear fashion. Naruto then ran at Yugao, unsheathing his sword and clashing with her multiple times. Yugao then jumped back from one of Naruto's blows, forcing him to windmill kick her to continue the combo, knocking off her mask as Sasuke then recognized her. She was one of the Anbu members who pinned him to the ground and declared him as the last survivor of the Uchiha clan. This enraged Sasuke when it originally happened, as he would ask Naruto who was still pressing her in combat with various different techniques and taijutsu abilities, as Sasuke then asked if he could take it from there, as he has a sort of grudge against her. With no questions asked, Naruto understood, as Naruto then kicked her up into the air and nodded at Sasuke as they switched places. Naruto would then immediately trap Donzo in a lightning and water prison, running at Sai who used a super beast scroll, whilst Donzo tried to dissect the jutsu and break out of it. It would be here that Sai would dodge, as Naruto would then, well, dodge Sai's own counterattack, as he would slice the ink in half as it would then splatter onto his face and clothes, as Naruto here would activate his one Tomoe Kuroime and three Tomoe Darkness Kuroime in his left eye, running at Sai and clashing with him and jumping back, making the hand signs for the multi-shadow clone jutsu, and creating a hundred clones who brutally cut and beat Sai until his death. In canon, Naruto probably wouldn't have done this, but I see no reason why he would let Sai live after, well, Sai is quite literally threatening his own life and the lives of his comrades. One thing should be known about this Naruto, he will not let people like this live who attack his, well, loved ones. And due to him only using one light Tomoe Kuroime in this situation and a three Tomoe Darkness Kuroime, he's a bit more dark and bloodlusted than normal. Now to be clear, just by using the darker forms of the Kuroime, Naruto doesn't turn into some sick bastard, but he isn't just going to let someone live who's trying to kill, like I said, him and his friends. As such, he's okay with killing Sai. Quick reminder to like, subscribe, and comment if you haven't already. It's good for the YouTube algorithm. We left off with Naruto killing Sai, and Sasuke killing Yugao, and that's basically it for recap, if you didn't know that already. But then I'd have to ask what you were doing, as this is the end to part 2 to what if the Namikaze clan had a dojutsu. This part 2 was significantly longer than part 1, but if you're watching this in a movie, then just skip past this part. Don't skip too far, or you might miss out on some of the story. With that being said... This has been Rami X. I hope you guys all enjoyed. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. And with that being said, Rami X out. Rami X back in your video. Hope you guys all enjoyed today's video. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button as that would be deeply appreciated. Share the video to a friend who likes for this or just anime content in general. And with that being said, we can now begin the video. Side note, I didn't think I'd have to be bringing this up, but naturally my voice lacks optimism uh <laughs> this is important just to say that no i do not sound depressed in every video it's just kind of how my voice sounds when i'm recording stuff like this i don't know when i'm not recording stuff like this my voice isn't uh this like kind of tone uh i don't know how to show you guys because i'm recording something but i just wanted to make it really clear that i'm overall like content with life and i'm not depressed uh i just got a couple comments about that and uh yeah anyways back to the video we left off with naruto uzumaki using a lightning style and fire style combination technique on kimamaro but this technique wouldn't work due to the fact that kimamaro had activated stage one of the curse mark amping his power by tenfold Naruto Uzumaki. These words were said by Kimamaro, to be clear. I'll save you the trouble and end your life as fast as I can. It would be here that Kimamaro would not start with just the stage one of the curse mark, but instead he would activate his full curse mark, amping his body by a hundredfold. He would then pull out his collarbone, using it as a sword. 
as Naruto would see Hinata and Sasuke both being able to barely keep up with the other four members of the Sound 5, as it was basically a 2v1 against each of them. Sasuke would then be injured by Orochimaru's snake bite as he decided to finally place the curse mark on a young Sasuke. Hinata would also happen to be bitten by Orochimaru, falling to the ground in pain, as Naruto would then close his eyes and reopen them. It was unclear why Orochimaru did this to Hinata, because obviously we know why he did to Sasuke, but it should also may be made clear that Orochimaru did see Hinata use, well, snakes, and watch snakes come out from, well, her sleeves, and so he was generally curious about the young Hyuga. With that being said, a tight, celestial-like aura would then induce Naruto, as his eyes had rolled back into his head, rushing at Kimamaro and windmill kicking him, knocking out a few teeth and making him bleed from his mouth. Naruto would then activate his dark and light Kroime, using Earth Style to lift Kimamaro, pounding his stomach as he then jumped as high as he could, bringing down his foot and black air force stomping Kimamaro. Now you might call it overkill that he has basically tapped into his hidden darkness power, but it's really not. Kimamaro was able to keep up with Naruto in his Curse Mark 1 form, let alone now that he's amped his body by not tenfold, but now 100 fold. It would be here that Naruto has now left Kimamaro with internal bleeding, as Naruto would then blitz to Yuya, seeing her as trouble with her genjutsu and all. It would be here that he would strip her head from her body. Now that now that is very uh, dark sounding, but this is a very dark Naruto at this point because he has yet to learn how to control the dark and light Kurama at the same time, and in this instance, he's actually doing it on purpose so that he can get the amp from it. It would be here that Naruto would start bursting into laughter. He hadn't had a true fight since the Land of Waves, and his occasional all-out spar with Sasuke going for the kill. Naruto would then be targeted by Kitamaru with a spider arrow. Naruto would look at this arrow, and then at Orochimaru, Jirobo, Yukon, and Sakon, who had all activated their curse marks except for Orochimaru, who doesn't really have one. And they had activated Jutsu. Naruto would see this as he would duck under the arrow, grabbing it mid-air and throwing it at Jirobo, who would fall to the ground before he could cast his Earth-style Jutsu. Naruto would then run up on Jirobo, grabbing his hair and lifting him up into the air, as he would throw the big Jirobo <laughs> into a tree. It would be here that Jirobo tanked this attack as they all in unison activated their full curse marks. I'm not sure why I said big Jirobo, that was not to fat shame him, just so that's clear. It would be here that they would all activate their stage 2 of their curse marks. Naruto would then start to battle all 5 of them at once, including Orochimaru, who would be shocked at Naruto's power. So much so that he backed away from the fight, although Naruto kept an eye on him the whole time, as it seemed as if he was summoning a jutsu, possibly a summoning style jutsu as well. It was taking incredibly long for this jutsu to activate. <clears throat> Whilst fighting the rest of the Sound 5, he realized that three coffins would begin to emerge from the ground, with Naruto throwing a few shuriken at them and paper bombs. With that being said, his few shuriken would stop the coffins in place, as one of the coffins would still open, revealing the first Hokage, and another would also open, revealing the second Hokage. It would be here that, of course, Hashirama and Tobirama would begin to fight Naruto as Naruto would start to be overwhelmed by their combined efforts. Yeah, Naruto is hell of a lot stronger even with his, what we'll call his celestial form, but there is nothing he's going to do against three sound five members that are amped by the curse mark in its second stage, plus Kimamaro, if you count him in the sound five, then that's four sound five members, and also Orochimaru himself, plus the first and second Hokage, even if you want to say that they're not in their full form due to the fact that they've been reincarnated and they're just not at full power. It's too much for Naruto and it would begin to overwhelm him. Naruto's back was now pushed up against the wall and he was being overwhelmed by their combined efforts as Naruto would start to get stronger while the fight went on, slowly and slowly adapting and gaining the upper hand even against, well, all of them. 
Sasuke and Hinata would then wake up from their unconscious states as they would get up dazed but still up. With a purple chakra surrounding them and the black marks of the curse mark now on their body, with this newfound power and, well, also newfound rage and bloodlust, they would aid Naruto, being able to help him, even taking out Jirobo and Kitamaru, quite quickly, might I add, as they would then pour their chakra into Naruto's body. It was as if it felt natural to them, as if Naruto was absorbing the natural energy around him. And he was. It had seemed that a part of the reason why this form was so powerful was because Naruto would just take in nature energy. And, well, since the curse mark is made up of nature energy, it felt natural to give Naruto a helping hand and lend them, well, lend Naruto their curse mark and their curse mark chakra. Naruto would then fall on one knee, and his nose would start to bleed. He had overdone it. He had taken on too much power. As Yukon and Sakon would then start to merge with Naruto's body. Hinata and Sasuke could do nothing as the pain of the curse mark now kept them immobile, as Naruto would immediately pull out his short sword, preparing to stab himself, and possibly even end his own life. It would be here that he stabbed himself, forcing them out and slowly killing them, as Naruto had now managed to hit them and they believed that Naruto would not hurt himself, but Naruto just saw it as common knowledge, or rather, natural knowledge. Common sense, even if you will. That if they were merging with his body and they were merging with his shoulder, then he would have to stab his shoulder and that would in turn hurt them. And if it hurt them more than it hurt him, then they would have to leave his body or the jutsu would be very, very dumb if they could not leave his body. With that being said, Naruto would then fight Orochimaru and Kamamaro with the aid of Sasuke and Hinata who had now figured out a way to fight through the pain of the curse mark. It would be here that he would also be aided by the Kyuubi's chakra, as Anbu would arrive on the scene, chasing Orochimaru who fled the scene of battle, not wanting to be injured further, as Kimamaro would fall close behind Orochimaru, but Naruto would then use his celestial form, briefly blitzing Kimamaro and forcing him to fight. Naruto didn't know this, but he had sped up Kimamaro's illness by a great deal, as Naruto would then be judo slammed to the ground coughing up blood and now looking at Kimamaru, who immediately jumped down, trying to attack him with a bone sword. Naruto rolled out of the way, as Kimamaru's bone sword was now stuck in the ground, pulling it out and jumping up. It would be here that Naruto would charge all of his chakra into his hand, as Kimamaru would then use the Bracken Dance technique on Naruto, who couldn't react to the unique and unorthodox fighting style. Naruto realized that the first and second Hokage were still there but they weren't moving for some reason it was as if they hadn't yet to be activated he would then use his bone burial technique turning his hand into a drill sword ready to kill naruto right there and then as everything became bones naruto was only alive now because well his celestial aura had protected him from the blow bones beneath his feet as for hinata and sasuke they had been able to well out blitz the attack and well just get away but they were still watching from above some trees realizing that naruto had undertaken a transformation that they had assumed was what he used to protect them back in the land of waves like i said naruto couldn't react to the unique and unorthodox fighting style of kimamaro as well the bone burial technique had now been activated kimamaro was ready to kill naruto and he was ready to put his life on the line to do so Kimamaro then fell to the ground, falling onto Naruto's shoulder before he got the chance to stab him. And when I say he was centimeters away, he was centimeters away, inches away from killing Naruto and stabbing his blade right through his heart, stabbing his bone drill right through his heart. But he couldn't. His body gave in, and even though his will was as strong as iron, he couldn't. His body didn't cooperate with him, and, well, it failed him. His body failed him, as he fell to the ground, falling onto Naruto's shoulder. <coughs> well, what's wrong with you? What is this illness? <laughs> you are a formidable opponent, Uzumaki Naruto. And I wouldn't have wanted to risk my life killing anyone else. 
coughing up even more blood, as Kimimaro would die here on his deathbed. Naruto would then get up, unsheathing his sword and stabbing it into Kimimaro as blood spurted from the wound. Naruto would then put this blood in a vial as the Anbu would lose Orochimaru's track. Now you may think that this is weird that Naruto killed, stabbed Kimimaro even after Kimimaro was clearly now dead, but he did it for two reasons. First, he needed Kimimaro's blood for something that will be explained later, but second, he did it to honor Kimimaro. No ninja wants to die because their body failed them, so if they are going to die, Naruto wanted it to be in the heart of battle, where he was killed by someone and not by himself. Dying because your body failed you is just as bad as killing yourself in Naruto's eyes, taking your own life through seppuku. With that, Naruto whispered to a dying Kimimaro that he was glad they got to fight, and that he has never seen someone with so much talent. Naruto, Sasuke, and Hinata would then be taken to the hospital for their wounds, all in critical condition, as Naruto would then stand up, using the Nine Tails Chakra mixed with his Uzumaki healing regen to quickly heal himself. It would be here that he would spread the Nine Tails Chakra to Sasuke and Hinata to heal them as well. For some reason, the Nine Tails hadn't rejected their chakras, as he and his team would prepare for the exams. This didn't mean that they were going to just regen and go after Orochimaru. It meant that they were able to heal up enough so that they would actually be able to go to the preliminaries and still, well, go to the tuning exams. It would be here that Naruto would defeat Kiba with ease, and so would Sasuke and Hinata with their battles. As Hinata would then beat Neji, as she has trained with the likes of many skilled ninja for a whole month to catch up to Sasuke and Naruto. And Neji is no Sasuke or Naruto. Now this is a fight that I really wanted to cover, but it's a fight that I feel like I had no right to cover. Because there's a better fight coming up. For the purpose of this video, we'll keep it somewhat to the canon, so that Gara vs Sasuke is still the last fight. So instead, it begins with Hinata vs Naruto, instead of Naruto vs Neji. Hinata and Naruto began talking with one another as the Chunin exams has now began for their matchup. Hinata made it explicitly clear that she didn't want Naruto to hold back, no matter what. No matter how badly he ended up hurting her, she knew that she needed to get better and that wouldn't happen if Naruto was always treating her like some little village girl. And so they commenced battle, and surprisingly, Hinata was able to gain the upper hand early on throughout the battle, shutting off Naruto's chakra points which made it so he was unable to use jutsu or chakra based attacks, which forced him to have a battle of attrition with the young Yuga Hinata. The problem for Naruto here was that Hinata had trained in Taijutsu with her gentle fist for years and years and years of her life. Almost her whole life she has been training in the arts of the Hyuga clan and Taijutsu. And although Hinata, who had nothing close to the amount of stamina as Naruto, she was still able to keep up and, well, injure him to a point where he was now bleeding. She would use attacks to create separation so that Naruto could only land half the amount of punches, kicks, jabs, etc. on her. With that, the battle had spanned on for some time, and, well, the people in the stands were elated by the battle. They didn't know who would win, girl or boy, Hyuga or the demon child. It would be here that, well, the curse mark on Hinata began to slowly activate. Hinata didn't want it to activate, as she knew that the chakra strain on her would be too much for her to handle. But it wasn't her choice. It was the curse mark, and she had no real control over it at this point in time. But it did help Hinata. It gave her more strength, which surprised Naruto. She was not only able to compete with him, but on some attacks, she was getting the better of him. Eventually, the curse mark started eating away at her chakra levels and became a detriment more than anything causing Naruto to realize that the curse mark was the root of this, and that Orochimaru had left on her a, well, a cursed seal. Naruto grit his teeth, which he now knew that Sasuke also had one of these things. But he would continue to fight Hinata, 
he didn't want her to think that he was holding back for any reason. And if he randomly paused to examine what was happening to Hinata and got hit, then Hinata would see it as Naruto not holding up his end of their deal and, well, not keeping his word. Their battle would slowly come to an end as Naruto didn't want to win just because Hinata was too tired. And so he would lower his guard just enough to the point where he could get hit, but not enough so that it looked obvious that, well, he was lowering his guard, even to Hinata, whose eyes were focused on every small movement that Naruto had made. He then received an uppercut as Naruto would allow himself to be sent flying into the wall of the arena. Hinata Hyuga was not yet declared the winner. And so, Hinata would throw a paper bomb into the smoke created by the blast, which created even more smoke. Hinata would run into the smoke as she would find Naruto. Naruto was on one knee and he was clearly panting, and although Naruto couldn't see Hinata, as only his one Kuroime was activated, Hinata could see him. Panting on the ground, and clearly bleeding. She felt a little bit bad, but she couldn't let her emotions get in the way of the battle. You see, she also gave her word that she wouldn't hold back, and it was a mutual thing. And so she ran towards Naruto, panting or not, kicking him up into the air and kneeing him in the gut. Naruto's eyes would slowly roll into the back of his head, but just as they did, they would come back to him. He regained consciousness in just a second, he would punch Hinata back, which caught her off guard, punching her right in the face and causing her to rethink her next movement as Naruto appeared behind her. Hinata would use her elbow, pushing it backwards, which would cause Naruto to be hit in the gut and would send him just a little bit far away enough from Hinata so that she could use the gentle fist on him once more, shutting down even more of his tenketsu. It was here that she would use a technique that Naruto had yet to see in his entire life. And although some of you may be asking yourself, how does Hinata know this? She does know this, even if it's not in the canon, she does know this in this timeline, in this moment, although she does learn this later on, or she already has it. I'm not completely positive. I should know this kind of thing, but she would use Okay, so quick side note, this technique was actually learned by Hinata, sorry for the voice crack, was learned by Hinata after the tuning exams. She developed the technique um, during the period afterwards um, where she would push herself even harder. In this timeline, she learns it before the tuning exam so that she can use it here. She practiced the technique around water during her training with Anko to hone it to perfection as she would use the eight divination signs, 64 palms of the hand technique. It is this technique that allows her to utterly annihilate Naruto and embarrass him in front of the Leaf Village and the Sand Village. Hinata would emit chakra from her palms and would move her arms in a sweeping pattern to provide a full 360 degree range of protection for her body. This chakra around her would also be able to cut through anything that Naruto attacked her with, let alone kunai, shuriken, whatever anything that tried to penetrate the protective spear, including Naruto's own fist, legs, cutting them and causing Naruto to bleed. Basically, a definition slash brief description of the jutsu. Hinata will emit chakra from her palms and move her arms in a sweeping pattern to provide a full 360 degree range of protection for her body. This chakra will also be able to cut through most any most of any target which dares penetrate and will attack the protective sphere. By expelling a more sharper, stronger, and more flexible amount of chakra, she can increase its effectiveness against more massive incoming objects, like say a fist from Naruto or a jutsu from Naruto. Naruto would begin to be bluntly beat by Hinata. She began to hit him in ways that he had never been hit before and with no chakra in his body almost, the nine tails had to step in pouring in amounts of chakra that Naruto hadn't seen in a while. As, well, Naruto was surprised. Hinata was kicking his, well, his butt, and there was nothing he could do about it. 
The attack slowly came to a close as Naruto's body laid flat in front of Hinata and Hinata's Byakugan began to dissipate. Hinata fell on one knee. As Naruto raised his hand into the air, it just so happened that Hinata's hand was quite close to Naruto's when his hand was in the air, as Naruto smirked. <laughs> you really think that I'd let you just embarrass me here? Who do you think I am? <laughs> if I'm gonna pass out, you're gonna pass out too. I know you've spent too much chakra, and that curse seal on your neck, I could tell it was eating your chakra away, so I made sure not to hold back. Unfortunately for me, you pulled out a technique I hadn't seen before. I was watching you train with Anko. I learned most of the jutsu that you learned. Now what I mean by that is I didn't learn them, but ah, uh, whatever. Point is, I know the jutsu that you have. That I wasn't expecting. So I didn't have a counter. But guess what, Hinata? W what? <laughs> Once I pull you to the ground, you won't be able to get back up. Because of that curse seal. Isn't that right? Uh, no, but you wouldn't. Oh, I would. You think you can just beat me up in front of every single villager? <sighs> it's not even fair. What do you mean it's not fair? I beat you fair and square. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Naruto would then pull Hinata's hand down into the ground, which would cause her to fall into the ground with Naruto. As they laid beside each other, the match would be called a tie, per the rules of the two day exams. The men and women of the village would applaud Naruto and Hinata for their performance as it was like watching butterflies dance in the wind. Sasuke versus Gara goes different. The difference here is quite simple, actually. It's that the Chidori is performed much faster and easier. When Gara is hit with the Chidori, the plan would be hatched, with the Genjutsu being activated. Naruto and Hinata, as well as Sasuke, would go to fight Gara. How do they get up so quickly? Well, it's quite simple. Kakashi would carry them and then would give them to, well, Anko, who has healing jutsu and would heal them enough to where they could stand, specifically healing, well, Hinata in a way that she knew and would use for her own curse mark when things became dire and when it was eating away at her own chakra, which would actually work for the young Hyuga. As for Naruto, well, his Uzumaki regen was enough and all that really had to happen was his chakra points had to be reopened, and that was quite simple for, well, he not had to reverse. Sasuke would go to fight Gara, and in this timeline, Gara wouldn't be as much of a problem, with Naruto eventually having his iconic chin crawl using Takno Jutsu on a young Gara. Naruto and his squad would then be in the hospital for about two to three weeks, as the third Hokage would survive in this timeline, but would be injured to a point where he has to pass down the role of Hokage. Due to the fact that Naruto had injured the former Sanin, Orochimaru, greatly and hadn't fully healed, as well as the potential for Anbu and other high-ranking Jonin like Kakashi or Gai being able to help Lord Third, he survives and would give Naruto, Sasuke, Hinata, and Shikamaru the rank of Chunin, as during the exams they displayed a very, very deep understanding of ninjutsu, taijutsu, and the ways of a ninja. Tsunade would decide to, well, leave the village once more, as Naruto would then go with Jiraiya to find her yet again, with Sasuke actually accompanying them. It had seemed as if seeing Orochimaru again had made bad memories arise as well naruto would be training with sasuke and jiraiya and this is where naruto would start to add wind to his rasengan or at least start to try to as naruto would then go to a hotel later that day with jiraiya as jiraiya would be out for the day doing research with naruto getting a knock on the door being smart enough not to just immediately open the door he would peek through the peephole seeing two people with the robe of the Akatsuki, Kisame Hoshigake and Itachi Uchiha. Kisame would then break down the door, shocking Naruto who ran out in front of them, running right past them and into a different hallway. As Sasuke would then get back 
apologies, excuse me, get back from training, seeing Itachi and going into a blind rage to kill the Uchiha who had murdered his own clansman in front of him. Naruto would tell Sasuke to calm down, not listening to him as he would then accept it, knowing that it doesn't matter what path he goes on, because, well, Naruto made sure that he would always be the light in Sasuke's way, as Sasuke would then charge at Itachi with a Chidori in his hand. Naruto was far enough to where he could escape at any moment, but he was also fast enough to where if Itachi had hit Naruto with an attack, he would be able to dodge, and if Itachi had just, well, hit the person that was charging in front of him, Sasuke, with an attack, then Naruto would be able to help Sasuke and even push him out of the way so that he wasn't hit by the attack. This is where the Namikaze Dojutsu timeline actually ends on my channel, but now it continues further than this, so we can actually now continue. Itachi would dodge, but Sasuke's three Tomoe allowed him to see what was coming, and it allowed Sasuke to position his Chidori to still hit Itachi. It would be here that Itachi would yell in pain as he would tell Kisame to run. Kisame wondered why as he would feel Naruto's blade slice him, looking around only to see a yellow blur encircling him. This blur would quickly reveal itself to be Naruto, as Naruto would punch Kisame fast enough to where he could not react to the damage, which was enough to stun him. He would then throw Samehara at Naruto, which would cause Naruto to dodge, watching Samehara try to eat the debris in the hotel building. Naruto now knew that the blade had the ability to eat things, most likely chakra or human flesh as, well, wild guesses. Naruto would then unsheathe his blade with his right hand as he created a shadow clone with his left, sending the shadow clone towards Kisame, who would react by picking up Samehara and slamming it into the chest of the shadow clone, which would sliver up the shadow clone as Naruto clearly watched Samehara chow down on the chakra of the clone and watched his clone become a shriveled up prune right before his eyes and disperse and implode into nothing but smoke. Naruto said nothing as he now knew that the blade that Kisame wielded could quickly absorb chakra. He used the smoke created by his own shadow clone per its destruction to his advantage, rushing towards Kisame and cutting his dominant hand right off which left the blade Samehada on the ground. Naruto then locked eyes with Kisame through the smoke, who now had a smirk on his face. Kisame quickly grabbed Naruto, choking him, holding Naruto now high in the air by his neck, as Naruto would kick his feet. He struggled to break free. It would be here that Naruto then closed his eyes. Kisame thought that Naruto was now trying his best not to pass out, but little did he know he was about to face a monstrous force, that on the level of a true Jinjuriki. Kisame's hand began to burn, letting off smoke, but Kisame continued his grasp, tightening it further as Kisame's skin then began to boil. He let go, causing Naruto to fall to the ground, as all Kisame would see was a red blur. He now stood still, with Naruto's blade through his chest. Naruto still said nothing to Kisame, who coughed up blood. Kisame would tell Naruto that he was a part of the Akatsuki, a group that has the goal of collecting the Jinjuriki. Naruto then applied chakra to his fingertips, as he apologized to Kisame, slicing his head clean off. Now you may wonder why he told Naruto that. Well, it's because he was surprised to find a Jinjuriki here. He had no idea that Naruto was the host of the Nine Tails. Now, again, why would Naruto kill Kisame here? This makes no sense. He's not in any bloodlusted form. He's just fighting Kisame. Why would he kill Kisame and cut his head clean off here? Well, it's actually quite simple. Naruto would kill Kisame because Kisame just admitted to his face that he's a part of the group that is trying to kill him and his fellow Jinjuriki. So I see no reason why Naruto, bloodlusted or not, or well, anything, would leave Kisame to just walk around and collect his, well, fellow Jinjuriki, or even possibly attack him. Naruto would then appear beside Sasuke, activating his Kuroime, as Sasuke was clearly now bloodlusted. Naruto would look at Itachi, then back at Sasuke, who would tell Naruto that this is his battle. Naruto would shake his head, telling Sasuke that Itachi isn't who he believes he is, as Sasuke would tell Naruto that he doesn't give a damn, with his hand still firmly placed through Itachi, Chisori Lightning still lighting the room with blue sparks of electricity, as Naruto would karate chop Sasuke, knocking him unconscious. It would be then that he placed Sasuke on his back, staring down Itachi. The two looked at each other for what felt like hours, as Naruto asked when he would see Itachi again, blood still dripping from the wound. It appeared to be a shadow clone. The real Itachi then revealed himself. 
Ikaki said nothing, but he would eventually tell Naruto that he was unsure, but that they will meet again, sooner, much sooner, rather than later. Naruto would then go on to tell Itachi that he knocked Sasuke out for his own good, and that he will be telling Sasuke exactly who Itachi really is, not the brother who massacred the entire clan to test his newfound strength and prowess with his newfound manga Sharingan, but rather the older brother who sacrificed everything including his own ties to his family and the Leaf Village to protect his own little brother, and to ensure that his brother survived. The brother who acted only in the place of love, the man that sacrificed everything for his little brother, the man who was forced into killing the clan by the corrupt village officials. Itachi then spoke once more, asking Naruto if he truly believed, after hearing all that, that Sasuke would still be an ally to the Leaf Village. Naruto then turned around, looking back at Itachi. I don't know. Sasuke is Sasuke. Once I tell him, will he still love the Leaf Village? No. Maybe he won't, but maybe he will. <sighs> if he turns on the village after hearing what I have to say, then he has every right to do so. The leaf has taken everything from him, just as they took everything from me. It's only natural that he would resent them for what they did. He would hold them responsible for the death of his clansmen and even for the death of you, for the death of his mother. The death of me? Yes, he would realize that it was the Leaf's politics that made you this way, that you weren't the person who Sasuke grew up with anymore. The corrupt elders made you this way. That's what he would see. He would see the way that the war-riddled world made you. He would see that it made you this way, that it corrupted you, that it turned you from the loving brother into a murderer. And even into what some would consider a monster. Even if I know you to be a true hero, Itachi, one who doesn't need a cape to protect those who he loves, and almost every action I've taken since knowing the truth about you, whether it's taking Kisame's life or helping an old person cross the street, I think about what me doing said action will result in. On one hand, me helping the old person is a kind deed with no hidden agenda. Besides, helping someone and possibly even making their day on the other hand is... Well, it's just being kind. Just like is killing an Akatsuki member, someone who I know only means to harm me and the QB that lives inside me and my body is one action. You see, one action was done through purity while the other was selfish. I helped the old lady because it was the right thing to do. I killed Kisame because it was the right thing to do for me selfish survival and practical thinking i killed kisame your partner because i knew the threat he posed just as you killed your clan because you knew the revolt they were planning and a civil war that could be caused and how that could result in the village being destroyed entirely which would just create even greater amounts of casualties in some ways it's an everlasting cycle itachi that may never break but i promise i will end that very cycle of hatred that creates people like you and Sasuke, or even me and Sisui. Shisui Uchiha. Goodbye, Itachi. And don't forget, I have the Koto Natsukami. So if things go south with Sasuke, I do have a secret weapon to stop him. And by all means, I will. Don't be a fool and think that I don't care about the Hidden Leaf Village. I wish to protect it at all cost, one day. I want to be the Hokage. But I also know that to do that requires great sacrifice. If I am to ever don the Hokage uniform, if I am to ever do and become the sixth, that is a sacrifice I must make. That which only men who display a quiet conviction, that which only women who display a quiet conviction such as you represent, I am Uzumaki Naruto, and our conversation is over, Uchiha Itachi. When we meet next, it may be on a battlefield, or it may be on your deathbed. Not to say a bad omen for you, but be careful. This world gets more dangerous by the day. And for that very reason, 
after we retrieve the Lady Tsunade, he will become Lord Fifth. I will use all of my authority to present a new ninja system. One which protects the youth of this village in more ways than they ever have been protected in the past. I know that Lady Fifth will sympathize with me, that she will understand me. She's the one who made it so that medical men were on every team during the war anyway, right? Regardless of what I have to do to ensure it, no Genin should have to face Kage or even just Jonin level ninja. It's the very reason that the past so, saw so little ninja grow to be older than the age of 14. As a Genin, I have fought one of the legendary seven ninja of the swordsman. I have fought you. There is no reason why I should encounter such threats as just a Genin. You make a great point. Naruto, but you promised that on your way to creating a reliable future for the youth of the Hidden Leaf Village, that you won't be persuaded by the darkness, that your beliefs won't falter. You do not know that. I do. I do know it because I know who I am. That's just my Nindo Itachi, my ninja way. Fine. You speak of ninja, Nindo, and your want of protecting new Genin. Your want for protecting the people of your village. It's admirable at best. But it's one thing to sit here and tell me that you wish to do these things. It's another to actually do them. Naruto said nothing, but he looked down to the ground as Itachi continued. You must ensure that you yourself never become corrupt and riddled with hatred along the way of bringing peace to this world. You must promise me that you can do that, that you can remain the light at the end of the tunnel whilst walking surrounded by the darkness. To be there at the epicenter of that darkness and to still remain kind-hearted and warm as if you were a bright lantern in the dark sky a bright lantern a bright lantern in the dark sky that no one could destroy it took me like three times just to say lan lantern uh i don't know why uh apologies naruto would reply again with a heavy silence you see naruto because everything you speak of is amazing Great ideas, might I add. Will you actually be able to fulfill that without losing yourself along the way? Promise me that. Yes, I will. I promise you that, Itachi. It would be here that Naruto would run out of the hotel and find Jiraiya, who he would explain the situation to. Afterwards, they would return to the building, finding nothing but Kisame's dead body, as Jiraiya now grew wary of the Akatsuki and how aggressive they have become at hunting the beach. <laughs> Excuse me. This became a powerful enough issue that Jiraiya believed that he could hold a Kage summit. For this information, some time would pass and Naruto would return to the Leaf Village. This time with Sasuke, Tsunade, and Jiraiya, as Tsunade would be accepted as the fifth Hokage of the Hidden Leaf Village, with the young people in the village loving that she was the first female Hokage of the Leaf, which showed the passing of a old torch to a new torch, the passing of the old era, and the old people of the village accepting the new era. Speaking of the old people in the village, they loved Tsunade for not only her immense beauty, but they respected her as one of the legendary Sani and for her power, but also for the fact that she was the granddaughter of the first and second Hokage, respectively. Now, with that being said, this is where this part will end. The rest of What If the Namikaze Clan Had a Dojutsu will either, either be found in part 5 and 6 or will be found in the movie. Or five and six may never come out. With that being said, they might just be compiled into the movie just to save time. I hope you guys all enjoyed today's video. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button as that would be deeply appreciated. Share the video to a friend who likes videos or just anime content in general. And with that being said, we can now continue if you're watching the movie. But if not, then, well, that's that. Rami X. Out.
Rami X Pac another video. I hope you guys all enjoyed today's video. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button as that would be deeply appreciated. Share the video to a friend who likes for this or just anime content in general. And with that being said, we can now begin the video. If you're watching this as a movie, well then enjoy. But this is part five to what if the Namikaze clan had a dojutsu. Technically speaking, part five is also where we chronologically left off the series as I recorded up to part five. But, well, this is part 5 of the remastered version. So if I were to do this again back then, this would be like part 10 or 11. Anyways, that's besides the point, and we can now begin the video. We left off with Tsunade being named the 5th Okage, and we briefly touched on how, well, the people of the village respected her, and loved the pick, and, well, loved Tsunade. The old people loved her because, well, of her relation to the Senju clan and the first and second Hokage. And the young people loved her as it signified a new era where a female could be Hokage, where a woman could lead the leaf village and protect it. With that being said, since Naruto has effectively killed all of the Sound Five, Gara has been defeated and brought to, well, whatever the light side of Gara is. And, well, Orochimaru has been defeated. I see no reason why Orochimaru makes another attempt at Sasuke's life yet. So, at this moment, he's instead looking at the other Uchiha who still lives, Itachi Uchiha, as this would be around the time where he's actually going to join the Akatsuki. With that being said, I see no pushes from Orochimaru, which means that we can now have the time skip. Now, is there going to be a battle at the Valley of the End? And to answer that, yes. Naruto would be eating ramen in the morning. It was about 8 a.m. And, well, he wanted to get a bite to eat before he started training. But as he began training, he realized that Sasuke was there too, as he would catch up with Sasuke. Sasuke and Naruto would be talking for a while as they would laugh with one another. And then eventually, Naruto cut the laughing out, and his face turned straight. Cold as a killer. I'm leaving. Huh? What do you mean, Naruto? I'm going to explore farther out. Explore? You mean, like, outside of the leaf village? Yeah. If I want to get stronger, then I must understand the world in which I fight it. I know next to nothing of the history of other nations. Yeah, I know of all the wars that the Leafs been in and the Hokages and, well, what they did for the village, but I have no idea about, say, what the Mizukages did. What happened to them in the Great Wars? Why Konoha is the strongest village, rivaling even the Hidden Cloud? I know next to nothing about politics outside of this village and, well, yeah. So you think leaving the village is going to do that? Naruto, are you hearing yourself right now? What, Sasuke? I don't plan on abandoning the village or anything. Oh, you should have mentioned that. I thought you were talking about, like, becoming a rogue ninja or something. Explain it to me. What exactly do you mean by leaving? Well... I'll leave for a few years, and then, I don't know, I'll come back. So what you're saying is you'll leave for three to four years, and then you'll return like nothing happened? Well, something happened, I left, but, yeah. Well, why would I let you do that? Fine. It's been decided. What do you mean it's been decided? Cut the crap, Naruto. You and I will fight for it. If you can beat me in a fight, then I swear to you I will stay in the village. If you cannot beat me, then I will leave by the morning. Or by tomorrow, rather. And when I leave, I will not return for four whole years. I will get stronger, better, faster. And I will promise to dedicate myself to training and training alone. 
I will become even stronger than Lady Tsunade. And I will continue to make my case as the next candidate. As Lord Sixth. Naruto. Yes or no. Either I'll leave for nothing or I'll give you the chance to fight me for it. I'm trying, Sasuke. I really am. You think I wanted to tell you that I was leaving? No, it'd be easier for me to just run away. I'd disappear for a few years. Of course, I'd tell Lady Tsunade because I'd have to. I'm the Jinjuriki, goddammit. <sighs> anyway. I'm giving you a chance, here and now, to accept the battle. To fight me. I'm giving you a chance to beat me, and if you win, then I stay. Fine. Fine. Sasuke looked down to the ground. As Naruto turned around, his back now facing Sasuke. The Valley of the End. The one near the outskirts of the village. Come alone. And before 6 p.m., Naruto would disappear. It would be here that he collected kunai, shuriken, and even paper bombs, putting them all into his ninja pouch. He was ready for battle. The rest of the time before the fight, he spent his time meditating, not in the Hidden Leaf Village, but right outside of it, as he slowly made his way to the Valley of the End, sitting down and beginning to meditate there, too. Sasuke then arrived, and as promised, he came with no one, alone with his blade. Since, well, what was a shinobi without their blade, without an extension of their will to carry them through battle? With that, Sasuke implanted his blade into the ground, standing on that of his, well, of his very own clansman's statue, Madara Uchiha, as Naruto stood on, well, his own counterpart. Hashirama Senju, the god of Shinobi. They looked at each other. Sasuke and Naruto both frowned. They didn't want it to be like this. Naruto sure as hell didn't, and Sasuke didn't want to fight Naruto. But he knew that he was going to go for the kill. And Naruto knew that he was going to do everything to leave. Because he knew that if he didn't leave, then he'd never get stronger. He had learned so much in the Hidden Leaf Village, but if he did not get stronger mentally, if he... If he didn't do that, if he didn't understand the ninja world, just like Tsunade and Haruzen and Minato and the Hokages of the village knew and understood the world, then how would he ever be seen as a good fit for the position? He knew that he was young. He knew that the moment that he began his Hokage campaign, that people would look and laugh at him. That people would berate him for trying. That people would, well, see him as just another child with the dream of becoming Hokage. One in a thousand. They would see him as just another person with the dream. But Naruto, he wanted different. And he knew to do that, he would have to not only extend his name far beyond the borders of the Land of Fire, but into other nin... Well to other ninja villages, to other nations. He knew that he would have to make a name for himself in these places. That he would have to spread the tale of Uzumaki Naruto throughout these lands, through good or bad deeds. He would have to become infamous. Just like Tsunade was a Sani, just like Haruzen was the strongest of the Kage, and Tobirama's successor, just like Hashirama was the god of Shinobi. Tobirama, the genius Hokage, who even created the Anbu and the Chunin exams, let alone the Ninja Academy. He would have to become infamous like even his own father, Minato Namakaze, the Yellow Flash. 
he would have to become someone that invoked fear the moment they stepped forward. Someone who was unrelenting, unrelenting in conviction and will and power. Someone who could not be stopped by mere words. Someone who had no fear. And so, Naruto and Sasuke would bow to one another. The respect they hold, well, for each other is insane. It is an immense respect reserved for the greatest of shinobi in their hearts. To them, they were like brothers. And well, they still are. Naruto grabbed a kunai from his ninja pouch. As he then pulled out a paper bomb as well, throwing it into the air as high as he could. As it slowly glided through the air, just when it was at the level of meeting Naruto and Sasuke's eyes, he activated the paper bomb and exploded it. Naruto would jump at Sasuke, going right through the smoke. But of course, Sasuke anticipated this without even needing his Sharingan to be active. Sasuke would clash with Naruto in the air, sword to kunai. As he would push his blade, and well, since his blade was far bigger than the kunai, it would push Naruto back, causing them to both catapult off of each other and land back on the same statues of Madara and Hashirama. It would be here that they clashed just like this many times over. About a hundred times, to be exact. Oddly specific, but, well, it's the truth. Eventually, they both decided to jump down. Closer to, well, the river. On the same level of it, actually. Their feet now soaked by the water beneath them. Their eye contact became strong. They were watching one another. And at this point, Sasuke's three Tomoe had now been active. And Naruto was using his one Kuroime. Naruto then spoke. Sasuke, this could go on for days, hours. Believe me, I know I'm strong enough to defeat you, easily. Fine, then come at me, prove it to me. Show me that you're not just all talk, Naruto, huh? Because we've been fighting here for hours and it seems to me like you're a no-show. We've been even this whole fight. So unless you want to tap into some more of that Kuroime power, then I'm not buying a single word you say. Naruto grit his teeth. The three Kuroime would then appear. Sasuke. I know. <laughs> You're gonna run towards me. You're gonna try to kick my ass. I'm gonna dodge. Or I'm going to counterattack, and then we're just going to keep fighting. Naruto put his head down and rushed towards Sasuke. And it was just as, well, Sasuke said. Sasuke dodged, but as he did, he would be sent flying into the wall of the mountain. He would land inside of the wall, creating a small crater as his body hit it. What the hell? What did he do? As the smoke began to clear, he saw Naruto walking towards him. But not alone, with a shadow glowing at his side. See, naturally, I'll be honest, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. I'm clumsy sometimes, arrogant even, and rambunctious. The Kuroime, well, it enhances even my weaknesses to make them strengths. That clumsiness, that rambunctiousness, well, it sparks me with idea. And me being so blunt and sometimes even borderline stupid, well, it changes that into rather, well, maybe not logical or rather smart like say on a test but it sure as hell gives me the battle sense the battle smarts the combat smarts 
I anticipated that you would dodge because you saw my attack coming. You read it like a book that you had seen a hundred times over. But the problem with you telling me that was that you hadn't accounted for if, well, I had a shadow clone. And so I just did what I thought was best. Create a shadow clone that would hit you as you dodged. Hit you just hard enough to send you into the mountain. And just hard enough so that you wouldn't be able to react to this. Naruto then slowly walked backwards. As Sasuke was curious as to what Naruto was doing. But... As the distance began to grow further and further away, Sasuke began to think to himself, did Naruto believe that he had won? The fight was barely over. He still hadn't bled, and neither had Naruto. Scuffed and scratched, maybe, but neither one of them had even... Well, you get the point. And so he stood up, dusting himself off, as he began to see a chakra form in Naruto's hand, he knew that this was the Rasengan. The deadly technique said to rival Ichidori. But Sasuke wouldn't allow Naruto to best him. Not with a technique that they learned side by side. Not with the Rasengan. And so he created, or rather activated, the Chidori. But in this moment, he would create a version of the Chidori even stronger than the Chidori. By expanding instead of condensing the lightning chakra, he was able to create an armor of lightning around his body and increase the range of his Chidori. He called this a Chidori Massacre. <laughs> the hand signs had now been formed as the lightning appeared around him. Chidori Massacre! Sasuke would say, rushing towards Naruto, as Naruto had now made his Rasengan whole. They would clash as the surrounding attack would engulf them both in chakra. And after, after the chakra had dispersed and the explosion had been diminished, after their attacks had cancelled out one another. The man who stood victorious of this battle was Uzumaki Naruto. The man with dreams of becoming Lord Sixth. He now looked down at Sasuke. Sasuke who was now bleeding from his mouth. Sasuke who's arms or and hands were now charred. It had seemed that although he had created a lightning armor around himself, causing the Chidori to expand rather than condense, made it so that the bursts of electricity were uncontrolled. <clears throat> and some of those bursts ended up hitting him and even breaking through the armor that was meant to protect him. This caused his arms and hands to now be charred as they were even, well, red at sight. Naruto said nothing, and Sasuke said nothing as they looked at one another. They knew what each other were thinking. And as Naruto looked down at Sasuke, Sasuke smiled. <laughs> you have won. I know. And you've lost, Sasuke. <laughs> <coughs> you don't have to rub it in. Of course I have to rub it in. So that you know that there is... That there is distance between that man and you. And you and I. Did you just say? You know exactly what I said. I said. So that you know that there's distance between that man 
and you, and you, and me. How dare you? Sasuke, whose body was still stunned at the amount of lightning that had hit him, would slowly begin to twitch his muscles. Naruto turned around as he began to walk away from Sasuke, but before he did, he paused. If you don't get stronger here in the Leaf Village, then you will never be able to defeat me. Nori Tachi. As Naruto would continue walking, the job was finished. He'd ensured that Sasuke would stay in the hidden leaf. And, well, he had been able to def well, defer from it for a little while. To leave the village in search of true power. That which is knowledge. Naruto continued walking. There was now some distance between him and Sasuke. But he looked back to see Sasuke. This time, he now looked at Sasuke, whose eyes were different from before. Now when he looked at Naruto, his eyes were full of rage and hate and anger. Not fluidity. The calm and even at times expressive Sasuke now became chaotic in nature. Naruto could clearly now see the purple chakra, the purple aura of the curse mark. He hadn't even he hadn't even thought about it before today. How Sasuke and Hinata still had those wicked curse seals. But again, it wasn't just the emotion in his eyes. It was the eyes themselves. Instead of Tomoe, his eye seemed to form into multiple different spikes. As if his eye were a flower and there were multiple petals. It was like multiple Tomoe, but elongated. Naruto knew that something was wrong. That this must have been, that this ocular dojutsu that he was looking at was no longer the one, two, or three Tomoe Sharingan, but instead, the Mangekyo Sharingan. The Mangekyo which Sasuke had unlocked when he believed that Hinata was killed by Zabuza. Because you see, something that, well, you may not remember as this movie has gone on for a really long time and or this video if you're watching this as part five naruto had actually well whilst he was fighting donzo sasuke had unlocked his mangekyu as well as well kakashi unlocking his once more and so well here he was actually unlo unlocking it consciously as well he's obviously still awake and, well, in a good mental space as far as, well, fighting goes. But with that being said, Naruto would watch as Sasuke charged towards him. But Naruto knew that the distance between them was too far. That Sasuke's legs would have to give in. That regardless as if, uh, well, regardless of if he was standing right now or not, the stun created by the lightning was too much. Anyone's legs would give out on them, even Sasuke's. But Sasuke kept running and running and running. A Chidori now in his hands. But, as Naruto believed, he would fall. And Naruto, who had now turned to now face Sasuke once more, watched as Sasuke fell on one knee. His Chidori slamming into the dirt beneath him and destroying a large part of it, as lightning beats earth. Sasuke then grit his teeth looking at Naruto. Naruto could see the anger again, but he could also see flames, black flames sprouting from the eyes, rushing towards Naruto. 
Naruto looked at the flames as he realized that something was off about them. And so he ran. He ran as fast as he could. As the Amaterasu flames chased him. Naruto circled Sasuke. As he told Sasuke to end the jutsu. That their fight would be unfinished. If he didn't. That he would have to leave the village. And they would never know the true victor. But Sasuke said nothing. He told Naruto he would do no such thing. That he would not diminish the jutsu. And so Naruto faced it. He faced the jutsu head on. As his body would be engulfed in the flames of the Amaterasu. The flames that burned for ten days and ten nights. And as he felt its burn, he would scream in pain. For all to hear. His screams ignited the valley with echo. <sighs> Naruto screamed. It was as if the pain made Naruto transform into something he wasn't. The pain that he was feeling made him feel helpless. It brought him to a, a deep darkness. Something that Naruto hadn't felt in a long time. He felt as if he had no power. As if he could do nothing. As if he was defenseless. And so in a fit of anger, he would roar at Sasuke. Sasuke said nothing as he nearly went deaf from how loud Naruto's scream was. He could slowly hear Naruto's pain as he watched as Naruto's skin turned red. The flames were clearly eating away at his body and his skin. Soon it would reveal limbs or Naruto would die. But this was the Naruto who had tamed some of the Nine Tails. This was the Naruto who had went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hinata Hyuga. This was the Naruto who had defeated Danzo, Haku, Zabuza, Torne, and Fu Yamanaka, as well as Yugao Yuzuki, all by himself. This was the Naruto that had made villages within the Land of Fire fear him. This was the very same Naruto that had destroyed his competition within the tuning exams until he faced someone who could quite literally dispel his chakra. This was Naruto Uzumaki, the man who wished to become the sixth Hokage of the Hidden Leaf Village, the boy who donned sixth on his arm, and he was going to be defeated by Sasuke. The boy who had the Kuroime, a legendary Namakaze Dojutsu. Naruto thought about all this, what it meant to be defeated by Sasuke. How that would invalidate his own dreams of becoming Hokage. As Naruto saw no reason for him to be the Hokage if he wasn't as strong as the others. If he wasn't the strongest, if he wasn't the alpha. Just like Hashirama was the strongest, just like Tobirama was the strongest. Haruz and Minato. They were the strongest in the village and they became Hokage. Naruto wanted no different by losing to Sasuke even if it were by flames that burned and charred his body for minutes on end, for hours on end. And so Naruto would endure. Slowly but surely, his screams in a, of agony and pain, the screams that scared the crows in the valley, the birds in the valley, and the animals that ran rampant, slowly but surely, those screams turned to nothing but silence. As Naruto sat on the ground, he endured the flames of the Amaterasu for as long as he could. But soon enough, his body couldn't handle the heat. And the flames that burned for nearly ever had to be quieted by the chakra of the Nine Tails, which aided Naruto. You may be saying to yourself, Naruto's OP, why can't he just blitz Sasuke and, well, defeat him? Well, 
no matter how strong he is, he can't just stop the Amaterasu flames. And what is he supposed to do? Fight and just fall back down due to the pain? Heck, if Sasuke wanted to, he could stand up and, well, start attacking Naruto. Throw a kunai at him or even a paper bomb. But he did nothing. He watched as Naruto endured until he couldn't anymore. He watched as Naruto fell to the ground. As the flames slowly dissipated. Sasuke had done it. Sasuke had reversed the flames. Into nothingness leaving only Naruto's body. But Sasuke was exhausted. He had never used the abilities of the Mangekyou in his life. Well, not consciously at least. And using the Mangekyo Sharingan. Side note, I say Mangekyou and Mangekyo, just to be clear here. Anyways, with that being said, and with not using Jutsu this potent ever before, and having used the Chidori now already twice, along with battling Naruto for now hours. It was now 11 and their battle started at six. Five whole hours had passed of nonstop dueling. That's about a fifth of a day right there already. And they had been battling 100% the whole time. Sasuke had never taken his foot off the gas. And so, so depleted, so drained. He watched as Naruto rose. As the man who wished to dawn, the sixth, as his title, stood before him. Naruto's aura was blinding. He demanded a sort of respect that other ninja did not. Purely based off of his presence alone. Sasuke realizing this stood. As a Taijutsu battle wouldn't... Well... A Taijutsu battle would induce the two. With Naruto... Barely able to muster up Jutsu... Due to the fact that he had been hit with such a technique that... Well... What was he supposed to do? He could barely feel his fingers. And just by touching them together on accident... It caused him immense pain as his hands were burned. His whole body was burned. He and Sasuke fought. And even though Sasuke had the upper hand due to the fact that Naruto had been injured by the Amaterasu, it was quite even. Until a punch from Naruto would send Sasuke down to the ground, knocking the wind out of him. Naruto would kick Sasuke in the face as Sasuke would be sent down, rolling on the ground. Now on his back, Naruto would pick Sasuke up. Sasuke Uchiha, you fought valiantly today. Naruto would now turn Sasuke's body around so he was now facing himself. He stared into Sasuke's eyes, quietly, yet he had a message. A message of love, of compassion of undenying camaraderie. He turned, or rather tilted slightly his head as he smiled. You know, Sasuke, there's no one else who I'd want to consider a brother. Sasuke shed a tear. In a time where he believed emotions were of the past, he shed a tear as he knew that he felt the exact same way. That out of all the people on the planet, all of the Itachis, all of the Shisuis, all of the people who Sasuke had formed a connection with, like a brother, Naruto was the one that he wished he could have forever. Naruto would throw Sasuke out of his, well, palms. As Sasuke would land on his butt, looking down to the ground. I surrender. I've lost. 
Now get lost before I change my mind. <laughs> you say that as if you'd be able to even get me. From where you're standing, it'd probably take you about a minute to get up, and then, well, you know the specifics from there. Today, I beat you with power. I out you, I out chakra you, I out ninjutsu you, I out even taijutsu you. Your kenjutsu was good, but not as good as mine. Your movement was fast, but you weren't faster than me. I beat you in everything that mattered today, Sasuke. So now you tell me. Who exactly is the stronger of us two? Naruto watched as Sasuke's mangekyo turned into nothing but his normal eyes. As Naruto walked away, putting his hand and raising it high in the sky as he made a peace sign. Bye, Sasuke. Get stronger. When I return to the village, I want you as my main adversary for when I become Hokage. I want you by my side, brother. Sasuke smiled and passed out. He would later be found by Kakashi, who wanted to know about, well, just about everything. And as he learned of it, he understood. Sasuke was, well, Sasuke was in critical condition. But he also now understood that for Naruto to even injure Sasuke in such a way meant that he was serious. Serious about becoming Hokage. Serious about being the best. Serious about pushing his limits every single day and surpassing everyone and anyone who stood in his way to becoming the sixth Hokage. And so, by that point, Naruto was already gone. And along his journeys already, he had met Strong Ninja. Or rather, in specific, a Strong Ninja. His name, Suigetsu Hozuki. Suigetsu had actually been traveling with Naruto. As they decided to travel with one another because, well, they were alone. And, well, they actually got along. There was clearly an age difference between Sugetsu and Naruto, but they cared little for things like that. Saw it as trivial at best. And so, they grew a bond. They became friends. And just as Naruto taught Sugetsu how to live without killing, Sugetsu taught Naruto how to protect himself in even more ways. He taught Naruto how to hone his water release. Even now without the use of the Kuroime. And he taught Naruto true power. He schooled Naruto on the history of the great ninja wars. And overall, the great ninja world. Although the wars were of course important, he taught Naruto about his own nation, the Mist Village. He told Naruto about the Blood Mist Village that he abandoned. He told Naruto about the seven ninja swordsmen, one of which he had killed. Zabuza Momochi. He even taught Naruto better taijutsu. Naruto had grown exponentially in the small while he had been with, well, Suigetsu. But eventually their time together would be cut short. Naruto had heard of a rumor, which, well, seemed to be quite true that the Hidden Cloud had two perfect Jinjuriki. Now he knew that they had Jinjuriki, that was obviously no secret, but that they were perfect? Even Naruto wasn't a perfect Jinjuriki. And the fact that they had two of them? Well, it intrigued Naruto to say the least, and he would set out to the Hidden Cloud village. After about a year of doing missions along the way, collecting the heads of some of the most infamous men and women who led the underworld, and, well, dabbled in the darkest of affairs. Naruto would reach the Hidden Cloud Village. He would jump into the sky 
climbing over the mountains and pillars that surrounded the village. As he entered the village, he looked around him, and the people were different. Men and women were not all of the same skin color, and he found that quite comforting in a way. People could be different from what he imagined was the normal, and yet still be looked at as normal. He assumed that this was how the chill beasts were treated as well. So he asked some of the locals who would have been around when the eight and two tails were originally sealed. But these locals denied every such claim that Naruto believed. They denied it by telling Naruto that that was far from the truth. That many of the villagers still resented Killer B and, well, Yugato for having the tail beast. Many men and women around the village still saw them as monsters, even though they had saved their village countless times with their power. And, well, the villager that he had asked would also explain the Naruto that they still care deeply for the Jinjuriki, even though they might despise them. They understood that with the Jinjuriki, they, well, are a ninja powerhouse at the top of the ninja world, right beside the Hidden Leaf Village. They knew that without those Jinjuriki, they, they would be barely what they are. That they would not have the same strength and opposing will on other nations. They knew that the tail beast that they had acquired all those years ago from Hashirama had allowed them, well, had allowed them to be so successful. And so, the villager explained that they still respect the tail beast. Just, they don't admire or adore them. They accept the tail beast for who they are with open arms. But they will never forget what the beasts that live within them did. To their friends, to their family. To the people who they cared about. To lovers, to children, to sons, to daughters. To aunts and uncles cousin and friends, to rivals, they will forever remember what Yuki and Matatabi did to their nations when they were released. Whenever the original wielder of the Jinjuriki went rampant, they would remember that and the damage that it caused. How many of their comrades, how many of their, well, people were lost. And as Naruto finished up his conversation with the man, he would eventually ask where he could find the two Jinjuriki, as he would be given a spot. And so he ventured to it. It was where the man assumed that Killer B or Yugito would be training. And Naruto just so happened to now meet both of them in one fell swoop. He found the two tails and eight tails training together. And so he drew his blade. He knew that Cloud Shinobi were the fastest of all Shinobi, and that they had the fastest ninja alive. The fourth Raikage, A. So, Naruto didn't want to take any chances. He couldn't afford to be blitzed or caught off guard by anyone or anything. He looked down on Yugito and Killer Beef from atop a small pillar, as they asked what he was doing up there and what he wanted, but he said nothing. They saw the leaf headband on Naruto, as they then realized that he was a leaf shinobi, and they drew their blades. Naruto said nothing. What was he supposed to say? Don't hurt me. I'm not actually a leaf shinobi anymore. And so he went to battle with the two and eight tails. He would drag on this battle for about three minutes, as they gauged that Naruto was incredibly powerful. They knew that someone like Naruto didn't come for the village just to relax and, well, to tour the place. So they asked what he was doing there when the battle came to a standstill. (sighs) I'm here on business, Naruto would say after yawning profusely. What kind of business do you have with our village? Killer B would ask. I'm here to learn how to become a perfect Jinjuriki myself. What? 
Why didn't you just say that, fool? Killer B would actually be delighted to hear this. You got to train someone? Another Jinjuriki? And he went along with it. He decided to teach Naruto because he respected Naruto's strength. Naruto had fought him and Yugito at the same time. There was no reason not to teach someone so powerful such a technique. And with Naruto telling Killer B that the real reason he was here was to ensure that they were safe and to warn them of the threat of the Akatsuki, Killer B saw no reason why not to train Naruto on this after he had given them valuable information. And with that, Naruto would begin training with B to perfect the QB. And so he would. And eventually, he would master Kurama Chakra Mode 1 and 2. Although, of course, he does not have Sage Mode, and, well, he has yet to unlock that or add it to his Kurama Chakra Mode. The point is, Naruto would spend the next two years with the Hidden Cloud, which meant that he had now been gone for three years. He had spent that time developing a bond with Yukito and B, and, well, of course, he had trained with them and even went on a few missions with the Two-Tailed Beast. Eventually, during the last year of his training, he would train alone, in the wild, fighting for himself, fighting for food every single day. When he would come across the occasional ninja running from their village, or, well, any rogue ninja that ended up on the wrong side of Naruto, he would dispatch of them like he did any evildoer by killing them mercilessly. Naruto knew that, well, now at least he knew, that mercy wasn't always a good thing. That when killing, there should be no doubt in his heart. And that if there were ever doubt in his heart while killing, that he should dispel that immediately because it only caused and proved to make him weaker. It gave him no strength. It allowed him to pity his opponent. The fourth Raikage once gave him a lesson, which Naruto would think back to. You, you're the son of a Hokage. There is no reason why you should allow so many of your enemies to live. Because although, although you may have the ability to grant them mercy, when you fight, when you fight an opponent, when you are in the heat of battle, and you are rushing towards an enemy nin, if you go into that thinking, oh, well, I'm going to beat them, but I'm going to end up sparing their lives, do you ever truly go in with the purpose to kill? For what is a ninja if not a weapon? A weapon to be exercised by its nation at, at any given moment. And so Naruto survived. He survived a hard year of training and developing his jutsu. Naruto had now managed to master the QB and progress his Kurumi to a state where it no longer drained chakra from him in its one, two, three, and even sometimes in its fourth stage. Not a big enough chakra to worry about it anyway. He practically became immune to the effects of the first three stages of the Kurumi, which meant that Naruto has been amped massively. You see, most of the time where his battles would come close with someone, it was because of his chakra not being able to keep up with the Kurumi. Sometimes he would even practice on ninjas, practicing new jutsu and, well, seeing how long he could last in a battle of attrition. Looking for his own flaws in battle, just as Sasuke once looked for his flaws in training to help him in real battle. And eventually the four years would be up. As Naruto put on a cloak, an all black cloak, as he made his way back to the Hidden Leaf Village. And just like that, he would be there. 
Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Share the video to a friend who likes to do this or the same content in general. I hope you guys all enjoyed today's video. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. If you're watching the movie, then just keep on watching. And with that being said, this has been Rami X and Rami X. Out. Rami X back another video. Hope you guys all enjoyed today's video. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button as that would be deeply appreciated. Share the video to a friend who likes for this or the same my content in general. And with that being said, we can now begin the video. If you're watching this as a movie, then just keep watching. This is the sixth installment to What If the Namikaze Clan Had a Dojutsu. And it can now begin. Naruto would look around. He sent somebody in the forest with him. He could tell that they were a ninja and that their chakra was quite high. If you were to guess, they were a Chunin or Jonin. At the very least, a Chunin. No Genin would be that powerful. Eventually, he heard a twig snap behind him. As he turned to look, he saw a man holding a sword. Blood had already stained his sword as he stared at Naruto, intently looking at him. The man would smile. I'll kill you and collect your head too. Naruto off the leaf. <laughs> they say that you're worth millions. Of Rio. If I collect you, then, then, then I can feed my family. Sorry, buddy, but I don't plan on being killed today. Back off. The shinobi who stood before him seemed to be from the Hidden Stone Village, but with a cut, or rather a slit, through his shinobi headgear, or headband. Naruto could tell that he was a rogue shinobi. Someone who went around collecting bounties for a living to quote unquote feed his family. What's a ninja like you doing collecting the bounties of men like me? <laughs> You're no men, kiddo. You're a kid, probably no older than 15. Naruto disappeared. The shinobi looked around him, but could not see Naruto. Correction. I'm 16. Naruto's blade would be stabbed through the man. So it's true. What's true? What do they say? It's true. That you, you're the second coming. The second coming of the yellow flash. <coughs> the stone ninja would fall to his knees. I didn't believe the rumors, but... But it's true. The man would fall to the ground. He was not dead. Naruto wondered who he had killed prior, but... Well, he didn't concern himself with the knowledge. Instead, he reached into the cloak he was wearing and pulled out a photo. And the photo was him, Hinata, Sasuke, and his sensei, Kakashi Hatake. Just like how the original Team 7 had a photo with Sakura, Sasuke, Naruto, and Kakashi, this new Team 7 in this new canon for this What If has a Team 7 photo with Hinata, Naruto, Sasuke, and Kakashi. Naruto would stare at it, putting it away and smiling to himself. It's really been four years, has it? <laughs> Naruto smiled. Well, I suppose it's time to return to the leaf. Naruto would be in the leaf village within a couple of days. As he walked around. To note, Naruto's sensory abilities have become bar to none. He has possibly become the, one of the strongest sensory ninja in Naruto, let alone the Hidden Leaf Village. With that being said, Naruto had also been able to tame the Kuroime. And what I mean by that is that he's been able to tame the amount of chakra drain. Now, basically, it means that he can use any form of Kuroime that he desires as long as he, well, has it. 
so he can't use, say, the fifth and sixth form with Kuroime because, well, he just hasn't progressed his dojutsu that far. But him using the fourth stage of his Kuroime does little to nothing on the strain of chakra for him, which is a huge increase to what Naruto was before, slash the abilities and chakra that he could use whilst, well, using his Kuroime. So a big step up for Naruto after the time skip. Another thing that should be noted, if you did not know this already, he does have Kurama Chakra Mode 1 and 2, although he doesn't have Sage Mode. Now, Naruto was in the leaf. He could sense Chakra. Honestly, he could sense more than one Chakra. He could sense about 11. 11 Chakras densely compact together. And so he rushed towards them. Maybe it was the Konoha 11. Or, well, the Konoha 12. If you want to include Naruto in that in this timeline. Which he rightfully is. And so he appeared atop a pillar. Looking down on his former comrades. He wore a mask. To hide his identity. But he knew that if he crossed paths with Sasuke in the group, Sasuke would know it was him. They just had that connection. Naruto drew his blade. None of them noticed as they laughed together, and Naruto smiled to himself underneath his mask. He was now looking at people he hadn't seen for years now. Hinata had grown so much, Sasuke looked so much more strong and confident. Kiba looked like he was finally okay with who he was, as well as Shino. Fine with letting his bugs run rampant around him. Not scared to hide them away. Prideful in who he was. Naruto smiled even harder now. As Naruto continued to watch all of them, he realized something was off as he did a head count of the group once more and felt a kunai to his back. My name is Sasuke Uchiha. You are then in the hidden leaf village. If you believe that you could attack the hidden leaf, then you are mistaken. If you're here on business, then you have no right to watch the Konoha 12. This made Naruto smile even more. Sasuke still considered him a friend. And, and, well, if you wish to battle any one of us, then allow me to take it on. Because quite frankly, you have no business here. <laughs> the rest of the Konoha 12 members hadn't realized, but after they heard Naruto's laughing, they quickly turned to, well, the masked shinobi, as they saw Sasuke behind him, pointing a kudai to his back. <sighs> I don't think you realize it. Realize what? Come on now. Look me in my eyes. Tell me everything you said. Say it again. Just look me in my eyes this time. And so Naruto would turn around slowly so that Sasuke didn't, well, see him as a threat. And, well, he would lock eyes with Naruto through their mask. As Naruto had kind of longer hair so Sasuke couldn't tell if it was a girl or a boy but what he could tell was that the person behind the mask was Uzumaki Naruto Sasuke dropped the kunai as he would then punch Naruto straight in the face knocking off his mask and causing Naruto to bleed from his mouth what was that for, Sasuke? 
It's for beating me in a fight four years ago, leaving and not telling anyone where you were going except for the Hokage. We're your friends, Naruto. We deserve to know. <laughs> and that's why you're not just my friend, Sasuke. You're mine. Don't you dare say it. I will deny it. You're my... But, but, I swear. I swear to God. Best friend. Ugh. You're so childish. Best friend, really? You heard it, and I am not going to take it back. You're the bestest friend someone could ever have. Sasuke. And honestly, I mean that seriously. <sighs> Believe me, I've gone through hell and back. I learned how to control the QB. <sighs> I've made the drain on my Kuroime all but dissipate. It probably requires the same amount of chakra now as your three tabak shard, but. Oh, and I've increased my Taijutsu abilities by training with. Someone who could wield the seven blades of the ninja hidden in the mist. The swordsman of the hidden mist. What? How did you do all of this? We can talk about it over some ramen. At the training grounds that we used to train at. Alright. Fine. Do you think that they've noticed that it's me yet? Judging by the fact that you haven't looked at them once, they have no idea. All right, let's keep it that way. I'd prefer my presence to be unknown. At least until I settle back down. Maybe sleep in my apartment for the first time in four years. I don't know. <laughs> Naruto and Sasuke would go get some ramen. After they were done getting the ramen, they would leave for the training grounds. As Naruto would begin to eat his ramen. So, what do you want to know? That so was weird because Naruto was eating. Tell me about what you did. How? Naruto stopped eating as, well, his ramen was too hot, so he had the weight to eat it anyway. When I left the village, after some time, I ran into a ninja named Suiketsu Hosuke. A powerful nin. Strong enough for me to, well, see him as quite the interesting person. A powerhouse of a shinobi, I tell you. He told me of how he escaped, well, how he escaped from some man named Orochimaru. And then, we formed a connection. We became great friends, and he taught me all he had to know about the Mist Village. He also taught me new Taijutsu skills, abilities that I hadn't yet grasped. We trained together for about a year, and then we parted ways. He was in search of the blades, the seven blades wielded by the swordsmen of the Mist. The seven ninja swordsmen, to be exact. I know who they are, now. Yeah, yeah. The point is, after that, I... I heard that in the Cloud Village, there were two perfect Jerukis. The two tails, Matatabi, wielded by Yukito. And, well, the eight tails, Yuki, wielded by Killer Bee. And so I traveled to the Hidden Cloud Village. And I found them. I proved my strength to them. I told them about my life, and, well, I was welcomed by them. I was even welcomed by their Kage, hey. He taught me better lightning release. But the point is, I mainly trained with Killer B and Yugato. I was able to hone the QB, the QB's chakra entirely. Now, we have a connection. Before, when I would use Ninetales chakra, it was more of a, well, Use it so there's no chance of us dying out there while you're fighting. Now it's more of a, well, eating my chakra then, so be it. You can have it, you know? I call it Kurama Chakra Mode 1 and 2. Well, what's the difference? 
the sheer power behind my attacks and the amount of chakra that I have to, well, use abilities in attacks. My speed is also far superior in KCM2 than KCM1. Although most of my abilities aren't heightened very much by, well, the difference in KCM1 and 2. From my base form that I'm in right now to Kurama Chakra Mode 1, I'm far stronger, far superior, far faster, far smarter even at times. More calculated in my own opinion. <sighs> but enough about me, Sasuke. Tell me about yourself. What have you been up to? How's Kakashi Sensei? Hinata? Hinata's great, and Kakashi's fine. He managed to fully unlock his Mangekyo Sharingan, and I managed to also do the same. We have been able to train our eyes together, although I use mine sparingly. I fear that if I use it too much during training, then then the eyes will fade? Y yeah, how'd you know? Itachi told me of the eyes a long time ago. Besides, you think I traveled all around the world just to not know what the Mangekyo Sharingan does? I learned all about the Uchiha clan. How the progenitor of the clan, or rather its most famed member, Madara Uchiha, how he battled with the Lord first, and how we were standing on their statues in the valley. We fought. It's ironic in a way. <laughs> now, anyway, the point is, I know just enough about your clan to know about the fading eyes of the Mangekyo. What you may not know, though, is if you take the eyes of someone with a Mangekyo Sharingan who's related to you, say, for instance, Itachi, then you gain an eternal Mangekyo Sharingan. Which is an eye that, as it, well, implies, is eternal. It cannot ever go blind. I see. I learned that Izuna Uchiha gave his Mangekyo Sharingan to Madara, who had already amassed the Dojutsu. And upon giving it to him, his eyes transformed into the EMS, the eternal Mangekyo Sharingan. It's amazing how he could still help mother even from the grave. That's how powerful Izuna Uchiha was. I learned of battles between Madara and Hashirama that spanned for up to 24 hours. I, I, I learned of the many clashes in the feudal times. I learned of the Jinjuriki all throughout. And I warned several nations of the Akatsuki and how they wished to collect the Biju. Most importantly, I told the Sand Village. I had to notify Gara. And now, they know the perfect way to defend against him. How's that, Naruto? Well, during the four years while I was gone, I learned a very difficult jutsu. I don't know how, but I found a scroll. Actually, it was quite close to the outskirts of the Hidden Leaf Village. It was covered in blood, so I had to open it. And as I looked at it, I saw many jutsu. Forbidden jutsu and jutsu that were, well, important to the Leaf Village. For instance, I saw the Rasengan and the Chidori. But more importantly, I saw a jutsu known as the reanimation jutsu. And even more important than that, a jutsu known as the flying Raijin. The reanimation jutsu, well, they required a human sacrifice and well, I'm not a monster. I wasn't just going to go and get a human sacrifice. So, practicing on the jutsu was irrelevant. But the flying raijin wasn't. And so during my one year alone, as well, after two years of training with Killer B and Yukito, I 
departed from the Kinnick Cloud Village, although we still have a strong connection. I managed to learn the Flying Raijin in the year afterwards. Honestly, I probably would have returned to the village a year earlier, but I found that scroll and, well, it made me want to work hard to master the Jutsu. Although, unfortunately, it took me a whole year, which is rather upsetting. We could have reunited much sooner. I assume you've gotten stronger too, Sasuke? <laughs> much stronger. Besides the fact that I told you of the Mangekyo and how I've been able to now use it properly. Truly. I figured out that my left eye creates Amaterasu flames. And my right eye can manipulate those flames. It is known as Kakatsuchi. The manipulation of my blaze release. I can even form spikes with it. Interesting. It seems like a potent ability that you now possess. It seems like you've left me in the dust, Naruto. I have no business fighting with you at all. Now, with that being said, many things would go very differently. Gar would never be captured by Daedora and Sorcery due to the fact that, well, Gara has a flying raging kunai with him, which means that the moment that the Akatsuki, well, came to the village, Gara would know he knew of their red flamed cloud cloaks and, well, he would call on the blade and, or rather, the kunai, whatever you want to call it, as it's kind of shaped in a blade form, as they are the exact same kunai that Minato used. But with that being said, the sealing formula is just a little bit different as well. Minato and Naruto are a little bit different, even quite different if you want to go that far, besides the fact that they are father and son, not to over explain anything. With that being said, as the seal was called upon, Naruto would appear, but bringing with him was Sasuke. And so Sasuke, Naruto, and Gara, a, well, Kaze Kage Gara, and a post time skip Naruto and Sasuke, Sasuke who has the Mangeku Sharingan in Naruto who has mastered his Kuroime and Kurama Chakabode, there is no chance in hell that Sasori or Daedara would be able to capture any one of them, let alone Gara. Now, with that being said, Naruto had also left a kunai with, well, two other Jinjuriki, those being Yugito and Killer B. But with that being said, Daedoro would fly away on, well, one of his bird clay bombs with Sasori tagging along as they were no match for the combined efforts of Naruto, Sasuke, and Gara. It would be here that a five Kage summit would be held by Gara, who had first hand, well, witnessed what the Akatsuki did and, well, how they are now actively hunting the Biju. The five Kage summit would be held as Naruto would be taken alongside Tsunade to the well, meeting of the five Kage. The first five Kage summit in decades. Naruto is proud. He was taken alongside Tsunade. Lady Tsunade took him. That must mean that she sees promise in him. It made him smile. It made him happy. The Akatsuki would be discussed within the meeting. As they would all leave Kunai with Naruto. So, in the case that their Jinjuriki were hunted, as long as they had contact with their Jinjuriki, because obviously people like Yutakata, who is the Jinjuriki of the Six Tails, Saiken, they're rogue ninja, so their village has no way of contacting them anyway. But for the villages with Jinjuriki that will actually stayed within, well, the village, they would have kunai seals for Naruto to basically be able to teleport to and aid their Jinjuriki. Naruto was clearly the strongest in the room, even surpassing Lady Tsunade, and every Kage could tell that the leaf was going to be a powerhouse for the rest of their days. That the keys to their kingdom would be entrusted to, well, the Nine Tails Shinjuriki Naruto Uzumaki, who even donned the kanji for sixth on his Jonin sleeve, as Naruto 
in this timeline is now a Joni. And so is Sasuke, actually, in this timeline, as well as Hinata, who is also a Joni. Now, with that being said, there is a lot of stuff that we are going to have to skip over because I can't have this movie be over six hours. But we are going to be skipping past most of the events until the pain battle. Naruto would absolutely bully pain. After pain attacked the village and would use, well, almighty push to destroy almost the entire village. Naruto would see this appearing on the scene after not having Sage Mode in this timeline because there's no reason for him to use Sage Mode. Jiraiya has not been killed because, well, he has no need to learn more information on the Akatsuki as Naruto knows more than enough about them as he was debriefed by Itachi. And so in this timeline, Jiraiya is actually going to be in the village when Pain attacks, which means that several of Pain's summonings would be dealt with. Tsunade would take on one, Kakashi would take on one, and Jiraiya would take on one, with Naruto taking on the other three, including the Deva path. All of them would dispose of their paths that they were fighting, as I see no reason why an individual path could stop Tsunade, an individual path could stop Kakashi, an individual path could stop Jiraiya, and three paths of Pain could stop a Naruto would KCM2. But with that being said, Naruto's Kuroibe would be the deciding, well, factor in the battle, as he would dispatch of all of them. With that being said, he now looked in the eyes of the Deva Path, who had been nearly dismantled after trying to use Shibaku Tensei. Naruto had blitzed him before he could use the technique, and as he watched rocks combine, he destroyed them sending all of the rocks and debris that Pain had gathered back at him, causing his Deva path to be in critical condition and unable to move. It would be here that Jiraiya actually approached the Deva path in this timeline, as he would be the one to stab himself with the chakra rod, now knowing exactly where Nagata was. Naruto in this timeline would still talk no jutsu, well, Nagato, which would cause him to revive everyone with Rene Rebirth. Other villagers realized that the relief was in peril, but they chose not to attack as they knew the military might that they had. Some time would pass and the fourth great ninja war would be held. With Kabuto at its helm, using reanimation jutsu after reanimation jutsu, bringing back dead ninjas, some were the strongest in their eras. Although there were a few he couldn't summon, the Hokages. Those Hokage were still summoned by Orochimaru, the Snake Sonny, the legendary Leaf Shinobi. But with that being said, the first great Shinobi war would be won by a familiar face. Uzumaki and Naruto teamed together to, well, my apologies, I made a mistake there. Naruto Uzumaki and Sasuke Uchiha teamed up together to create a fearsome duo that ripped apart several squadrons of reanimated nin. They even defeated the seven ninja swordsmen all by themselves. They were a force to be reckoned with. They killed so many ninja that by the time that Mothra was in, well, the war and had been reanimated, they were there. They were in the 4th Division, ready to face Mother, and they would. The two of them would be the ninja leading the charge. As, well, Mother was shocked. From what Mother could tell, Naruto's chakra levels, his insane chakra, had to be that of a senju. And so he saw it as a senju and an Uchiha working together. That there may have been peace in this world. That, well men and women alike between nations maybe had learned to forgive themselves. That maybe, just maybe, it didn't require power to create peace. Because between Hashirama and his own clan, they had found peace. A Senju working with an Uchiha to fight. An individual threat to both of them. It was almost ironic as he was fighting for 
peace. Although he believed that power was needed to ensure that peace. Naruto and Sasuke would fight him for what felt like forever. And eventually, they would be crowned successful, which means, in this timeline, Madara never becomes the Tenjuriki of the Tentils. Actually, overall, it means that the Tentils never appears. Because all of the Tail Beasts are not collected, the Tentils cannot be summoned by Madara. Let alone the fact that Naruto hadn't been taken and the Ginkaku and Kinkaku brothers were actually defeated by Sasuke and Naruto. Like I said, they were a fearsome duo that tore apart the reanimated shinobi together. Well, Sasuke used his Mangekyo Sharingan and Naruto used his Kuroime to, well, basically destroy any and all reanimations using a secret, well, a secret sealing jutsu that his Kuroime had in its fifth stage, which Naruto would awaken whilst nearly being killed by a reanimated ninja. A reanimated ninja who happened to be the Ginkaku and Kinkaku brothers. With that being said, there is no Tentails, which means that there is no Jubidara or, well, Jubito. So, with that being said, Mother is disposed of, and Kabuto realizes that his army has fallen to pieces. Obito would appear before Kabuto, asking if everything was okay, as he felt the presence of Mother dissipate. Kabuto would tell him that everything was under control, but that somehow two shinobi had actually defeated Mother. Obito would ask where these shinobi now were, as Kabuto would tell him. Obito would then use his kamui to appear before them, daunting his mask. Naruto would try to hit him, but he couldn't. But eventually, he figured it out. He figured out the jutsu. With Sasuke's intellect to be able to break down the jutsu, Naruto knew how it functioned. As something eerie would happen to Obito. He would watch as the flying raijin was performed on him like it was all those years ago on the night of the Nine Tails attack. As he would be Rasengan in the exact same way. Obito now laid on the ground. What is this, Master? Sensei? Your son? What has he become? Has he surpassed you? Obito thought all of these things while still on the ground. The Ten Tails had yet to cloud his mind and make him only see red. To put it bluntly, at least. Obito would be defeated far before he could turn himself to the light, as Naruto would almost stab his blade through Obito, but, well, Sasuke would stop him, telling Naruto that his leaf signature was that of a leaf shinobi. That, well, the signature he got from Obito was a leaf signature. I said leaf signature earlier, but I meant chakra signature. With that being said, Naruto would stop as he would teleport Obito back to the hidden leaf village, imprisoning him and placing a chakra seal on his mask, which meant that his eyes were now sealed. He also put one on his body and, well, shackled him to well, the cell. Obito now would be a prisoner of war, as the fourth great shinobi war had been ended by Naruto Uzumaki and Sasuke Uchiha. I am Sasuke Uchiha of the Hidden Leaf Village, and I, I am Naruto Uzumaki of the Hidden Leaf. We declare to you proud and strong ninja who have gathered here as one army. We are here to declare that the Fourth Great Shinobi War is over. Many ninja applauded and yelled and screamed out in happiness. Some cried tears of joy. Naruto and Sasuke were crowned heroes of the war. And after three years of the war being, well, a thing of the past, Naruto would be appointed to the sixth Hokage of the Hidden Leaf Village after learning as much as he could under Tsunade and Kakashi, which are two pretty good, well, people to learn under for the position of Okage. With that, Naruto would settle down. He had no reason to keep fighting and, well, Sasuke would act as his shadow Hokage, doing the dirty work for him while he sat in the office doing paperwork and while protecting the village from within. 
Sasuke made sure that outside threats like even the old Tsutsutsuki could not harm the village. Now, although there is no reason for Sasuke to have a Renegon, I see no reason why the Sage of Six Paths would not do nothing and not give Naruto or Sasuke an amped. So maybe this sounds outlandish to some. But with Hagoromo not wanting the Sage of Six Paths chakra to go to waste, knowing that he could help Sasuke and Naruto in the case that any Otsutsutsuki would threaten, well, the world, he would grant them the powers of the Sage of Six Paths, meaning that Naruto now has the powers of all the Biju effectively. And he also happens to have, well, true seeking orbs along with Sasuke. With that being said, Sasuke also now has the Renegon, which is obviously a huge amp. But with that being said, yeah, I see no reason why they wouldn't be able to have those as, well, Hagoromu would have to ensure that the Otsutsuki could not destroy the planet Earth. They would need, well, Earth would need a proper protector, or in this case, protectors, Sasuke and Naruto. The two people who could protect the world from nearly any threat with their power and their power threshold. With that being said, eventually, after some time, Naruto would actually fall in love with Hinata, as after Hinata confessed her feelings for him. And it would be there that they married, and even settled down having children. Himawari and Boruto. Or rather, Boruto and Himawari, as Boruto would still be the firstborn in this timeline. Sasuke would happen to settle down with a shinobi that he had met far outside of the Hidden Leaf Village. Her name being... Karin Uzumaki. After learning that she was in Uzumaki, Naruto was delighted. His clan would, well, continue. His clan that was wiped out would, well, it would continue further and further. And at the height of it would be strong shinobi. The strongest shinobi in the entire world, most likely. With Sasuke and Naruto as the people who would, well, be the inheritors of the clan, there was no better option for people to lead the new Uzumaki. With that being said, at this point, Naruto does actually know that Minato is his father. I just wanted to make that clear because I see no reason why Kakashi wouldn't tell him, especially after the war and after Naruto becomes Hokage. Now, with that being said, you may see this as a rushed ending you may see this as an incomplete work of art. But I see this as a series that continued to five parts that was never complete. I see this as a remastered series that was brought life again. And a series that I hope all of you enjoyed in its entirety. And although some parts maybe were too slow or too fast, I hope that you enjoyed and that you understood the time and effort that it took to make this. That you understood the dedication that it took to create such a what if. To bring back my old video and turn it into new. Because what is a what if, if not art? And what is art, if not an explosion? This has been Rami X. I hope you guys all enjoyed. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. And with that being said, Rami X.